And good afternoon. Welcome to the Tom Taylor Sports Show on this Thursday. Here we go on the 12th day of the month, 24 days into this, and we certainly appreciate you being with us wherever you may be. Again, either live streaming right now, livestream.com, or later on the podcasting, which will be, of course, on iTunes Radio. Uh, tune in. Uh, you also have, uh, of course, YouTube, and you also have the Stitcher.com, the Stitcher phone app right now, livestream.com, around the world on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Also, be sure and uh, go to the Facebook, and you have. We thank you for that. Tell us you like us, and we would certainly appreciate that very much. And, again, you have. And so you just simply go to Facebook.com backslash the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Like and follow us. And, again, we would ask you, and I had some of these overnight as well, joining our email to uh, join our email list to get exclusive content from the show, including a weekly rundown of guests and more. And to be added to the email list, just uh, email me directly at ttaylorproductions at gmail.com. It's just that easy. And so 220 is here with us again. Horace is on the road. We're going to get a live report from him somewhere Somewhere in Florida, I, all I saw, he sent me a picture of the bus this morning and something about a gin rummy game in the back of the bus with some seniors. And beyond that, uh, we have a special picture that was captured by Mrs. V that we will send down the line. Can we do that? Can we put it up? Will it we pick can hold up? it up, yeah, we, yeah. I don't think we had a chance to get it emailed over. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It'll work. Yeah, we can show it like we did. <laughs> um, yeah. Showed the, the hump day hat yesterday. There you go. And uh, – yeah, it's going to be good. So uh, we've he has been caught in the, uh, which I've seen before, in the snooze position on the old bus. So we'll show that coming up and check in with him, see where he's at this afternoon on a live traveling report. we got college basketball, lots of hoops going on. we got high school basketball. The Hampton Bulldogs holding their own right now so far in the first quarter. And the boys' AA uh, state tournament in Murfreesboro will keep you posted on that. See how it goes for the Hampton Bulldogs of Coach Ned Smith. Also, we've got uh, – as we said, college basketball, lots of college hoops going on right now. Uh, the NFL movement continues to be big time or move months. Uh, we'll tell you all about that. Also got some baseball news and some boxing, all that. Plus, going to be hearing from Buzzer. Also, David Carmichael from the Johnson City Parks and Rec. Uh, David Crum, the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency officer. Again, if you're live with us today here in the media Tri-Cities, what a beautiful day in the neighborhood the good Lord has given us. Man, it is gorgeous outside. Spring. It's not there yet on the calendar. When is it? The 21st, which will be next Saturday a week. But it sure feels like it, and we hope it stays that way. And a beautiful day here in the immediate Tri-Cities. And I know you'll be watching and listening to this later tonight on the podcasting, so may not be where you are. But today, live here on live stream, it is, as Archie Bunker used to say, gorgeous. <laughs> Did you ever watch All in the Family? Yes. You're a big fan? It was, it was okay. Meathead. I mean, it, yeah. it, was a, it was a show. Oh, yeah. Meathead and uh, <laughs> Archie. Loved Edith. I loved to hear her get all a little flustered and, jeez, Edith, Archie. Oh, Great. Good stuff. Anyway, as he would say, it's gorgeous outside, and it certainly is. Our show is dedicated to the man who hung on the cross for us. We unashamedly tell you that each and every show. Here's today's verse of the day out of Psalms 25, verses 8 and 9. I am good and upright. I will teach you to walk in my paths. Not bad when the good Lord tells you that. Strive to be humble. I will guide you in justice and teach you my ways, which are mercy and truth. How about that? That's the verse of the day. I am good and upright. I will teach you to walk on my paths. Strive to be humble, and I will guide you in justice and teach you my ways, which are mercy and truth. Out of the book of Psalms. And, again, uh, 220 is right there with me. We unashamedly devote this show. And he's pinch hitting for horse. We'll be back on Monday. But we unashamedly devote this show to, once again, the King of King and Lord of Lords. This is the way it is. And. It ain't going to change. So uh, we're glad you're with us again on this Thursday. College basketball, lots going on, a lot of hoops. So let's jump in there. The scoreboard will be current. 220 will keep us posted throughout the broadcast here today. Uh, let's see. Compliments of the Kingsport Times News. We refer to them today. Uh, out of the ACC, Virginia, Florida State. Do we have one there? 34-17, Virginia is killing them. The Wahoos in the quarterfinal of the ACC in Greensboro. Atlantic 10 Conference. A second round, UMass and LaSalle. UMass, uh, um, LaSalle is leading 31-30 at halftime. There you go. All these games are at halftime. Um, Big East, see. you got Villanova. You got Nova and Marquette at the first game in the quarterfinals. Uh, Villanova 39, Marquette 21. All right, that's at the break. Or close. Close to the Halftime. Half-time at the break. All right. Big 10, 
The Wolverines are mauling. Did you tell me mauling Illinois bad? 40-23 at the half. That's a maul. Yep, that's halftime of the second round game, the first of four in the Big Ten. Big 12, uh, Baylor and the and the Taliban. How are they doing right now? Uh, 7.55 left in the first, and the score is 21-20. Uh, bad guys for you. West Virginia <laughs> Taliban. is beating uh, Baylor. There you go. Us. Hey, and my tide just kicked off, too. Yeah, tide tab- in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what? 2-2. Yeah, see, that's a football <laughs> term. So you're still thinking football. Saving. Kicked off. There you go. Yeah, it's football is king in Alabama, no question. So you were asking before we went on the air. You said, hey, man, West Virginia's hanging right with him. I said, I don't care. <laughs> that's like Alabama-Auburn back up home. Us Marshall boys. We don't cheer for the West Virginia Mountaineers. It just don't happen. So, by the way, the herd <laughs> went out with a whimper last night. They got beat in the first round of the Conference USA tournament by Western Kentucky. I know you don't care, but we got beat by 14, so we're done. I'm not all that surprised. So, another game cranking up out of that same conference, UTEP and Florida International. It'll be a 1 o'clock tip just getting started, and everybody else plays tonight, including – The Tennessee Volunteers taking on the Vanderbilt Commodores in the opening round of the SEC for Tennessee at 7 o'clock tonight. It'll be the third game of the day. As 220 said, Florida, Alabama right now. Texas A&M and Auburn at 3.30. Tennessee Vanderbilt at 7. And Ole Miss and South Carolina wraps it up at 9.30 tonight. Last night or yesterday, Auburn beat Mississippi State and South Carolina defeated Missouri. Tennessee, do they have anything in the tank for the Vanderbilt Commodores, do you think? I mean, Tennessee, I don't think it's a bad team. They haven't had the best of seasons. I think the coaching-wise and stuff, they're still kind of struggling there some. But, um, yeah, I think they do. I think they got a shot. I, I, You know, anybody that's listening that knows me knows that my love for Tennessee runs very, very shallow. Minimal <laughs> at best. Yes, yes. yes. Um, Being a Bama boy, gotcha. Yes, uh, but uh, it's <laughs> a um, – but I, I do think they've got a, a you know a shot of being competitive today and, uh, and making it a good game. All right, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, did we get all the scores, everything up today for the college? Uh, Hampton was tied with Union City at one point here a few minutes ago. Leading. They're now leading. They now. were up three, and then it jumped back to one. And then I can only get it on a radio broadcast, so it's kind of hard for me to play that while gotcha. we're on the air. <laughs> gotcha. But uh, we'll try and keep you posted on that. Also, congratulations to Y Central. Wow. Young ladies went up there yesterday and wrapped up. They went to Richmond and wrapped up a perfect season. Y Central out of Southwest Virginia, 29-0, defeats Floyd County 63-59 for them to bring back, again, the uh, championship. What a game. And, again, for Coach uh, uh, Robin Dotson, for the uh, Y Central Lady Warriors, bringing home the state championship, girls 2A state title game at the Siegel Center. And that's awesome. So, Congratulations again to Y Central, and we will hope to have Coach Dotson. We'll see if we can get her on tomorrow for the show when we get back in town, and and it'll be my homework assignment to try and track her down and get her on the show tomorrow. So, and according uh, to WJHL, Clintwood won also. They did, yeah. Clintwood won as well. They sure did. So happy, or ha- sorry, not Happy Valley, but Clintwood defeated Twin Valley, fifty-two to fifty. Uh, that happened yesterday in the girls' single A championship. So we have a double dose winners in Southwest Virginia. Now, what's interesting about all that is if you go back and look at our weather over the last week to ten days to two weeks, there's been a lot of snow and a lot of problems in Southwest Virginia for a lot of folks. And yet, these teams uh, obviously weathered through the storm, no pun intended, to get to the point where they could play and focus on these games and win. I mean, a lot of folks were without power. Uh, frozen pipes, flooding, lots of problems, and they continue, unfortunately, in southwest Virginia. So these two schools kind of blocked that out and went up there and won it for their communities. Clint would be Twin Valley 52-50 for the girls' single-A championship. And Y Central beat Floyd County for the 2A championship 63-59. to So Clint would and finishes their season at uh, 27-2. and and Y Central, as we said, finishes their season at 29-0. and So congratulations to those two teams. Bring home state championships to our neck of the woods in southwest Virginia and northeast Tennessee. It's the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Again, we thank you for being with us again on this Thursday. Uh, let's talk a little football, NFL. You're not happy, and I don't guess you should be happy because uh, in your division, you're about to lose your big running back to somebody that you're about to face twice. DeMarco Murray talking and meeting with the Eagles. Now, I'm not happy. I want him to go to the Raiders, but he apparently is leaning more towards the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't know why. He's leaning towards a team that's not – that doesn't have any hope or <laughs> – Shambles, no good, no hope. 
is pretty much what you told me on Monday. So I think it's about an exact quote. Mm-hmm. It was. I wrote it down. <laughs> I know. Shambles, no good, and no hope. So, and maybe he maybe he thinks the same way. <laughs> He's talking to the Eagles, but the Raiders got a big fat checkbook to go get him. But he apparently is going to go with Philadelphia. It's not been confirmed, but it has certainly been implied here this afternoon that. Uh, how does Jerry Jones, how does that set when he lets guys leave A, but B, go to his rival in the, in the same division? I, you know, it, it's, it doesn't sit well with fans. I, I mean, me and all my friends are they're Cowboys fans, three, all three of us. I was going to say, uh, there is more than one? <laughs> like four of us total. That's counting Jerry Jones. Uh, most of the players aren't even fans of the team. They just show up and get a paycheck. But um, – it, but it's one of those things that it continues to be complicated because you listen to all the talking heads go on about this thing, and the big deal is is that so who's the option? Who do you go get to replace De, you know Demarco Murray? And and he he was solid running back. You know the guy's only made about two million dollars in his career. He's, he's in his fourth year now, and and he's he's only made two million dollars because he was a third round pick. Um, I heard somebody say earlier that's more that Mark Ingram had a bigger signing bonus than that. And so oh, when, really? he, when he came in, he was a first-round pick. And so, you know, this guy's made, for all intents and purposes, nothing because of when he came into the league. And, you know, he deserves to get paid. And, and I mean, and, and that's one of those moments that I, I'm okay. Players, if coaches or if uh, owners don't want to pay guys at that point in time, you know, let them make their move. I just hate this to the Eagles. I hate this to an in, in division rival. And, too, now, you know, instead of getting a quality player uh, with our draft pick, we've now got to go look at a running back or we've got to try and pick up a, a C.J. Spiller or Reggie Bush, somebody like that who's still sitting out there in the market that hasn't been grabbed yet. You got more problems. You want to hear the other one? I saw we lost. Um, Defensive tackle Henry Melton goes to the Buccaneers to go back with his former coach, Lovey Smith. So he's gone. He leaves the, uh, the Cowboys defensive front. He's out of there. Boy, I tell you. You can look over here. You can come join us. You can come. Looks like it's where you're headed anyway. <laughs> All the defections, you may be right there with us. I may be telling you this time next year. They're in shambles. <laughs> There's no good. There's no hope. You'll be calling me up. You, you and Jim will be sitting here, and you'll be like, hey, get Robert on the phone today. <laughs> get 220 on. Let's, let's, let's razz him about the Cowboys. Uh, let's see some other moves in the NFL. Chris Conte, hope I'm saying it right, leaving Chicago to safety to go to the Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, the Jaguars cutting defensive end Red Bryant to save money there by $5 million will save. So they can put that towards somebody else. Colts got who they wanted. They got the Texans' Andre Johnson. Uh, Three-year, $21 million contract. I would think that would be an instant shot in the arm offensively for Mr. Luck and the Indianapolis Colts. Wouldn't you not agree? I would. I mean, you know, they had Reggie Wayne, and, you know, he didn't catch a ball in his last three games. And so I don't I don't think he was targeted a lot either. But – um. You know, Andre Johnson's not that much younger than Reggie Wayne, and so uh, it'd be interesting to see if they're looking to add him to the offense in a different way than they did Reggie there those last few games. Yep, and then you have uh, Tom Coughlin, the coach. The Giants gets a one-year contract extension, which I think <laughs> what I read was a formality, but he's not really set the woods on fire, has he, as a coach? You know, it's so funny. Every time they go to fire him, he wins the Super Bowl, so they shouldn't have they shouldn't have <laughs> extended his contract. They should have told him he was going to lose, yeah. and David Tyree would catch a ball off his helmet and beat the Patriots this year in the Super Bowl. So, um, I mean, it's tough. You know, the last 12 years, the Patriots have lost two Super Bowls, and mm-hmm. it's both of the Giants on ridiculous catches and stuff. If they'd have lost two, um, I mean, it's just amazing that they the interception thing and stuff. It really just kind of a, a turn of fate. But, yeah, so the Giants are probably going to win the Super Bowl this year. What What's your take on Eli Manning? <sighs> Oh man, you know everybody wants. You know the the talk is always is he better than his brother, and uh, he has more Super Bowls. So I guess if you know you don't you don't pay to get you don't play to you. I guess you play to get paychecks, but you don't play to get paychecks per se. You play to win championships. Get rings. And if um if that's what it is, then um he he's pretty good. There's not many quarterbacks that get two, and um and so he's got he's got two of them, and most don't get one. There you go. So, so yeah. You're- so. He, he's he's a good quarterback. I don't know that he's better than Peyton. Um, I, I really don't. Uh, Peyton, um, it, it, it's weird his situation there. He just seems to uh, kind of come up short a lot. But um, yeah, Eli's a good quarterback. He seems to make good decisions. He just he's not had much around him. They kept get trading off all their good players. As a competitor, and that you are, you've played sports all your life. Would you rather have the rings or have the stats? At the end of the day, Peyton's got the stats. Eli's got the rings. Um, I'm kind of a team player guy. I choose rings because I, it's just 
That's I'd what rather, I'm there for. I'd rather every well, and that way, and everybody else wins. Then, if I get stats, it's because everybody else worked hard. Whether whatever, regardless of the sport, everyone else was doing their part for me to get mine. But at the end of the day, they don't remember who came in second. They remember who came in first. Uh, you know, Al Davis said it best: "Just win, baby. <laughs> Give me those rings. We've got three <laughs> up there. It's been a while, but we've got three, three Super Bowl championships. It's been a couple of days. It's been, been a couple of years, a couple of decades. <laughs> Let's be nice. The Bears." They uh, let they pick up safety Andrell Roll, uh, Andrell I should say Andrell Roll, yep. three year, eleven and a half a million dollar contract. They also signed wide receiver Eddie Royal for the Bears. Uh, also Jabal Sherd, hope I'm saying it right. S H E R D, linebacker, defensive end, uh, two year, eleven million dollar contract, five and a half million dollar guaranteed. And so uh, leaving the Browns, and I think I didn't write it down. I go go back and check. I think he's going to the Patriots. If I'm not mistaken. So. Let me double check that here. I was in a hurry, and I'm so excited getting ready to talk to Horace here in a minute, and I'm just beside <laughs> myself. Uh, when he sees this picture, he'll be beside himself. We got to get this thing. Up. It, w- can we get it up here? Just put it up in front of the camera. Yeah, we can I got to put the phone up there to see yeah, it. Yeah, we can do that. I've got to see my boy. A uh, little R and R, catching some Z's on the bus. It's going to be good. So we'll do that coming up here in a few minutes. Also coming up. Uh, we got a story about the Super Bowl. If you remember the fiasco back in 2011, a lot of fans, a lot of fans were promised Super Bowl tickets and got down there, and there were no seats for the tickets in 2011. Well, they've sued, and the NFL's getting ready to write a big check to some folks. We'll tell you all about that. And also, March Madness starts next week. You won't believe. I've said it amazed at the numbers. We'll tell you about this coming up in a little while. The number of brackets will be filled out next week. And the amount of money it's going to be wagered in this country alone for March Madness is unbelievable. But it is that which it is. And once again, we go back and, you know, the, the modus operandi of this show is sports is one spoke in the big wheel of life. But according to this, it's a whole lot bigger than that. It's it's big business, and a lot of folks put a lot of money and a lot of time into this March Madness NCAA tournament bracket. Quick break. We'll be right back. We'll go to Florida and we'll see if we can track down our boy on vacation. <laughs> the man we simply call Horace. We'll come back with more and him and more sports. Come back with us right here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. At Farmers, we make you smarter about insurance. Because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know that it's smart to replace washing machine hoses every five years? What if you didn't know that you might need extra coverage for more expensive items? And what if you didn't know that teen drivers are four times more likely to get into an accident? So, the more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at BrackenPaving.com. There we go. Still there? Can they see that picture? They should be able to see it. They should be able to see it. Yeah, they can see it. Let me, let me take it a little bit closer for you. Get it in there a little closer. Zoom it in on my boy. 
Hey. There you go. Horse is with us live in Florida. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm doing good, Big Jasper. What are you doing That Where are you? It sounds like you're being in the middle of some kind of other barking out I, military instructions. Where are you? I am at the Charlotte Sports Park uh, in Port Charlotte. Yes. In Florida, south of Tampa. Yes. And uh, the Toronto Blue Jays are taking on the Tampa Bay Rays as we speak, and it's the bottom of the first 0-0 zero, zero score. So, I think I think I just heard B fifty two. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Put that back up there again. I want him to see that. My boy, did you know Mrs. B took a pic? Did Mrs. Did you know Mrs. B took a picture of you on the bus? I, I'm afraid I do now. Yes, it's up on the screen right now if you're watching that. So my boy is psyched out getting some R and R. So so you're down there watching. Do they have a female public address announcer? Is that what I'm hearing? I don't know what you're hearing. I know it's awful loud. That's why I had to put in some earbuds so I could hear you guys. Yeah, so I sound like there's a female PA announcer, which is okay. So will you see Daniel Norris? Have if you ran into him, you're going to get a chance to see him today. I don't think so. We had a little bit of a late start this morning, and we got here just at game time. He knows we're here, but uh, the odds of me getting to meet up with him are pretty slim today, unfortunately. All right, so you got a late start. Who overslept? Did you guys kind of run over last night that bingo game? What happened? It was not me, I assure you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I took my nap on the bus. So somebody overslept, got you guys late getting into the ballpark. So what did you have? What kind of treats did you have? What kind of uh, munchies did you have coming down on the bus? Well, actually, uh, the only thing I had to my favor was a Lucky Charms uh, Rice Krispie crisp treat. A grown man on a bus with a Lucky Charms and a Rice Krispie treat bar. Is that correct? You got it. That's yeah. what I had. Now, you're at the ballpark. What do you think? What's on the menu? I know you've checked it out. What's on the menu at the Blue Jays ballpark there in Port Charlotte? Well, actually, I'm looking at the, the menu up here in the, at the concession stand, and it's pretty slim, unfortunately. There's a barbecue sandwich. I may look, may look at that. <laughs> uh, and they got a jumbo hot dog. There you go. Uh, of course, they got all the regular stuff, the uh, soft pretzels and ice cream and that sort of stuff. Check, Wouldn't check, be. check. I mean, dabbling at all of it. I don't know. There you go. Pretzels, second <laughs> inning, ice cream, fourth inning, jumbo hot dog, kind of cap things off. So are you going to bring me back a souvenir down there, the Blue Jays, of something, the Blue Jays? They don't have anything here for the Blue Jays because we are in Port Charlotte. That's the home of the Tampa Rays. Oh, I'm sorry. You're in the Tampa Bay. refrigerator magnet, magnet that says the Rays on it. Or maybe a little tiny pennant to put up on the wall here behind me in the studio. So, so you've dri- <laughs> you went down to see Daniel Norris, and now you're not going to be able to see him. How come you can't see him? I, well, he's in the dugout right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that, but I mean, can you see him after the ball game? He knows you're all there. He does. We'll, we'll give it a shot. We're not 100 percent sure uh, with the pitching change, uh, with the controversy they got going on, and the struggles that they're dealing with. Uh, he hasn't really had much time, I don't think, to. Um, do the PR PR thing, I don't think. Uh, yeah. You know, with, with Stroman going down, uh, he's in a heated battle for that uh, rotation spot right now. All right, so you're there in Port Charlotte. Now, what, what's on tomorrow's itinerary? What are we going to be doing tomorrow? Tomorrow is shopping day. Ooh, Mrs. B is going to go shopping. All right. Yep, and I think we're going to eat breakfast and then take off and hit it. Uh, don't know what we're going to find, but we're going to look for it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So we'll check back with you. I want to see what you had from the uh, the. Old, I don't care about the game. I want to know what you had at the concession stand. So I'm going to check. All right, I, I'll, I'll take a picture and I will send to you what I have. Okay. There you go. All right. Now, last question: What was going on on the bus today? Did you have any uh, Uno going on? Any bingo on the senior citizen tour bus? What was going on? Well, you know, up front where I was sitting, it was awful quiet. But they were rowdy in the back, and I think they broke out in a game of gin rummy. But I'm not 100 percent on that. <laughs> Now, how do you define rally on a senior citizen bus? There's a lot of clapping and yelling. What people were stayed awake. What was the senior? How do you get rowdy on a on a senior citizen church bus? Well, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure what was going on, but I know my brother-in-law was involved. <laughs> well, there's no doubt about that. He's definitely involved. You know, I won my bet because I said you probably sit up front. I bet you sat behind the driver, didn't you? Exactly. That's exactly. I nailed it. I knew it because he's a backseat driver. I got you. All right. Horace, enjoy your day down there with Mrs. V. And what's the uh, what's the weather like down in Port Charlotte right now? 85 and sunny at the moment. 85 and sunny. And I saw your legs here on the camera on the picture on the bus. And uh, if they got any that, right, if they got any of that tanning cream stuff, that bronzing stuff, I will, I'll pay for it if you get it slapping on your legs. 
<laughs> lather it up good, too. Oh, so. mercy. I'm sorry. I'm not going there. All right. Have a great rest of the day. I'll talk to you tomorrow, all right? All right, man. Take care. All right, Morris. Bye. All right, here's my buddy. Well, no wonder he knew he didn't have didn't know what was going on the back of the bus because he, of course, was uh, up front and behind the driver catching the Z's, my boy horse. So, there you <laughs> now this is the best part. I love this. The guy he talks all last week. We're going to meet Daniel Norris. He knows we're coming. Blah 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 blah. They're late getting there on the bus. Somebody overslept. Obviously, he wasn't going to rat anybody out. And so he gets down there, and now they can't meet him. So they've traveled all the way to Florida to meet the guy, and apparently he said, well, these, these, which has nothing to do with him coming out of the dugout for two minutes going, hey, I mean, he used to hang with Horace's son. In fact, he told me last week here on the show that, you know, he stayed all night with him when they were in Science Hill together. And, and so they're really tight. But now they're down there, and he doesn't think he can come out of the dugout and wave at him and say hello. I'm thinking he's battling for a starting position. I'm thinking Horace. It's 35 seconds. You've driven from Tennessee. Hey, shake a hand. Hey, give Mrs. V a hug. And hey, I got to get on the bus. Got to go. But I don't say they can't find time to, or he can't find time. <laughs> In his defense, I guess you and I will both have to say uh, we never got paid to play. No. Nah, but again, <laughs> if he knows they're there, and he did, he told me that he's texting him. He knows they're there at the, at the ball game. I can't imagine the manager can't not saying, hey, yeah, a couple of minutes, go over and shake hands with these people that come from Tennessee, and let's get on the bus, let's get going. But anyway, we'll see. Hopefully, you'll get a chance to meet him. That was the whole point going down there. But anyway, that was our boy, Horace. He's r and r and he'll be back in town, ready to go on Monday. And, of course, 220 is with me today and tomorrow, and we appreciate him sitting in him with him and for him all week. Got the quiz show coming up next. Join our email list to get exclusive content from the show, including a weekly rundown of guests and more. To be added, all you got to do is just email me, and you have. We thank you at T Taylor. All lowercase, T Taylor Productions at gmail.com. Coming up, we'll check in with David Carmichael from the Johnson City Parks and Rec. Also, David Crum, the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency officer. Also, we're going to hear from Kurt Bush. We haven't said much about that, but that continues to unfold. Uh, going off the air yesterday, we were wondering if, and that's been decided, Chevrolet has, in fact, said it can drive the car. And so everything is, uh, I guess, for all intents and purposes, status quo going into Phoenix this weekend. For Kurt Busch, who did not have a good run there last year, we'll tell you about that. We'll also hear from Kurt Busch uh, talking about the decision made, how he has been reinstated by NASCAR and is now eligible for the chase for the championship. However, comma, up next, we have Buzzer going to do the quiz show. I'm feeling a five for five today. We'll see if we can do it coming up next here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. At Farmers, we make you smarter about your insurance because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know to update your coverage when adult children move home? Oh, heck no. Or that you could get coverage for identity theft through your homeowner's insurance. And that your valuables can be covered by home insurance even when they're not at home. The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to Farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. Life has its twists and turns. It can take many different shapes, but a good retirement plan changes with your life. And as we talk about what you're putting away and how much you'll need to retire, what was uncertain becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today.
Back on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Update out of Murfreesboro, third quarter. Union City 36, Hampton 28. Bulldogs down eight in the third quarter. Hopefully they can get things turned around and, and uh, win that for uh, Northeast Tennessee. Let's go to the phone. It's time now for the quiz show. Brought to you by American Import and Auto Repair. Also by Vito's, home of the uh, free loaner car program at American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City. Uh, my buddy Greg Sally from the Reds Report said he's got his vehicle there today, getting a little service work done to it. A lot of folks go. Buzzer, you've had your vehicle at American Import Auto Repair, have you not? I have. I take it there for the oil changes. There you go. Good afternoon. How are you, Sunshine? I'm doing good. How are you? Just fine. Is this weather not perfect? It's beautiful outside. I just got back from a walk through downtown in Jonesboro, and it was very nice. Yeah, I was outside. I didn't have anything on but a pair of shorts today. It was nice. No shirt. I was feeling free about myself. It was good. And uh, just let the just let the sun bounce off my chest. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Buzzer. <laughs> I guess you've seen my legs, so. All righty. <laughs> Moving right along. Uh, not Kyle Bush, although we found out he's doing, you know, he's, he's rehabbing pretty good. But what, what's your take on all this with Kurt Bush? What do you think? Well, I've not been following it as closely since they announced that he can now, I guess, get hit, reinstated to, to drive again, right? In exactly. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So, I don't know. I mean, everybody's not guilty until they're found guilty in the court of law, and it sounds like he's kind of off the hook, right? Yes, he's off the hook. He's been reinstated. He gets to go back pretty much as he was before. Uh, Chevrolet's going to honor him to drive the car. He can. They've made a waiver, NASCAR did, so he can now qualify for the chase, even though he's missed three races. So uh, they've made some, a lot of, uh, uh, we talked just, they made an example out of him. Now they've made exceptions for him. So, yeah, he's back pretty much in the fold. So, now, for the folks out there, the and I'm right there with them. I don't condone any kind of domestic violence in any way, shape, or form. So those that uh, have much more passion about that, how do you think it's going to shake out with folks, uh, with people buying Chevrolets, people following NASCAR? Think there'll be some fallout from folks who feel like that uh, he should have been penalized further and harder. Well, there may, there may be. I mean, I don't think NASCAR has those loyal people that were there before, but they're definitely growing. Um, I think that Kurt is going to have a hard road when he steps out there um, on the track to race and, and hears some booing. But, um, you know, everyone makes mistakes, and who are we to judge? He was found not guilty. So um, I guess we'll see. There will be something big and bad on to the next, you know. Guaranteed. And, of course, the female base of NASCAR, too. I'm wondering after I heard the – uh, reinstatement yesterday, how they're going to react because apparently something happened, and uh, he says it's a total fabrication. We're going to hear from Kurt Busch coming up here in a little while, but he says it's a total fabrication. Obviously, as my father used to say, where there's smoke, there's fire, so there's got to be something to it. So uh, how do you think the female base of NASCAR, NASCAR fans are talking about, will react to all this? I kind of don't think it's going to go over well. However, me being a female NASCAR fan, um, I know that it takes two to rumble, um, so I don't know. Sometimes it, it's hard to tell. I think that maybe both parties might be a little guilty here. Now, our guy's still on the shelf, Kyle Bush. Are we still pulling for David Reagan, or are we going to pull for somebody else to Kyle gets back? I guess I'm going to pull for him. He's not been doing great, but, um, <laughs> you know, hopefully Kyle will be able to race a little bit this year. He seems to be doing well with his recovery, but they've not said anything yet about when he's going to come back. So I know it's hard to judge at this point. Yep, in fact, uh, go to NASCAR.com. There's a little video, a little 44-second video of him and his wife, Samantha, and showing him sitting in his wheelchair, and both legs are propped up, obviously, and, and uh, she is showing her bump as she is expecting a boy in May, their first child. So uh, I guess it's more than a bump at this point. It, it's uh, 60 days away from having their first child. So anyway, he's back on the mend. His comment was, uh, you know, things haven't changed over 2,000 years. Bones take a while to heal, and he said, I can come back when my bones heal. So it may be a while. So we're going to stay with David Reagan. Is that what you're telling me, us Cowboys right. fans? I'm going right. to stay with him. I guess, you know, Denny Hamlin broke his back last year, and he's back doing great. So, um, you know, he'll, <laughs> Kyle will bounce back. All right. Now, you're all about Denny. Which one do you think's the cutie by, Denny Hamlin? Yeah, I like Denny. Got me some Denny. All right, now. Uh, before we get into the quiz show and see what's going on in Jonesboro, what are your Packers doing in the free agency market right now? Anything? I, think, um, I don't know about the free agency market. I, didn't they just say Randall Cobb is back in, and he is my favorite, so I'm glad to hear that. All right, so Randall's back with the Packers. 
yeah, they're still making some moves in Green Bay as the free agency market continues, swapping players and trading players and signing players. What about your Heat? How are the Heat doing since last time we checked? The Heat beat the Nets last night, so I was excited to see that. But that little fireball, Hassan Whiteside, has been uh, having a little bit of an attitude, getting some flagrant <laughs> fouls, getting kicked out of some games. I think he needs to cool it. What's his name? Who's this guy? Hassan Whiteside. Oh, is that the guy that's got the hair? Um, no, that's Birdman. That's Birdman. He, Birdman did have a, a career high last night against the Nets, so good to see that. Well, I don't want to burst your bubble, uh, <laughs> Buzzer, but the Nets, I'm looking at there, 12 and 51. A win's a win, Tom. <laughs> okay. I just, I just, I'm looking at this thinking, you know, Birdman and the career night against the team, it's 12 and 51. Okay. A win is a win. You got it. I understand when you're the Heat and you're having the year you're having. I understand. Of course, you're six under now, but uh, you're 21 games out. You're right. A win's a win. So, there you go. Tell me what's going on in Jonesboro right now. It's a big weekend as always. Always something going on in the yeah, oldest town. We've got a couple things going on. Uh, Sheila K. Adams in the Scott Falls. She's an Appalachian mountain woman teller. Um, she's going to be telling some stories. They're going to be playing some banjo music here tomorrow night at the Visitor Center at 7. And then, of course, Pride and Prejudice debuts at the Jonesboro Repertory Theater tomorrow night. Um, so we're looking forward to that as well. Young lady, last name is Alexis Turner. Is a young lady playing Pride and Prejudice. Outstanding talent. I saw her a couple of years ago in a play. And also, is it Lucas Schmidt, the young man's playing the lead for Pride and Prejudice? Is that That's right? That's right. Mm-hmm. There you go. And looking ahead, what's coming up in the next couple of weeks in Jonesboro? Yeah, we're looking forward to We've got a, a nice art exhibit going on at the McKinney Center right now. It's Jury Art uh, 60 pieces on display there that runs through april but of course easter is coming up so we have a big easter extravaganza children's event on the 28th of march from one to three so that's our big our next big one coming up all right our buddy buzzer who plays every week on the quiz show we've got one correct answer there's six total on the bracken paving scoreboard show or on the scoreboard we call it on the show i've got four buzzer got one and gators got one we got a total of six you're asking me today uh, we're playing for a free oil change from American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City. A free gift certificate from Vito's on Main Street in Kingsport. Love me some Vito's Italian food. Free. By the way, have you been over to Vito's yet? I've not. All right. It's a lunch. Wow. It's a lunch date. If you'll if you'll give me some days that you are free, I know you're a busy lady. We'll go over there to Vito's and I'll treat you to lunch at Vito's. Sounds good to me. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll I'll have my peeps call your peeps and yeah. work out a schedule. Yeah. All right. Uh, free haircut from Cher- somehow that didn't sound like a really convincing. No, yeah. I want to do it. Two twenty. Did you did you feel it coming out of there? I didn't. I didn't feel the the. It's like she's blowing me off. Like let's get to the quiz show, Dom. This yeah, is, right. This yeah, is right. The, this is a lady that was just really excited though that her team beat the the Nets. The Nets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, go, going I out to lunch. I there mean, it, gotcha. it's probably kind of in that world. So. Good point. <laughs> also, if I go five for five, she'll get a free, I'll get a free haircut from Cherokee Barbershop for my contestant and also a free courtesy pass to go to see everything in Bays Mountain Park for the day, including getting into the planetarium for free, getting in free admission. Barge, right, anything that's paying, get to, uh, it's free, and it's good all the way through the end of the calendar year. So there you go. And today I'm playing for, let me think I'm going to play. I'm going to play for Tony Valk of Evergreen of Johnson City, one of my good friends and runs a great business and, and uh, I think he's going to be coming on with us here soon. Tony Valk of Evergreen's my contestant. We're playing for him. Let's see if I can get him a five for five. And buzzer, here we go. Let's take question number one. Wait a minute. Quiz show. i got to get the music in. Right? Here we go. I love that. <laughs> love the quiz show theme. All right, Buzzer, here we go. Okay, since Pride and Prejudice is debuting at Jones Preparatory Theater this weekend, Guess what all the questions are going to be about. Oh, God, okay. This is going to be 0 for 5. This could be an over. <laughs> this is. I, Tommy I'm, usually does quite well when it comes to theater. All so, right. So, um, <laughs> things could be easy for you, Tom. All right. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I don't know I don't know how to take that, but all right, here we go. You do well. Thank you. You really do. Okay. Pride and Prejudice was written by J.K. Rowling. True or false? Pride and Prejudice was written by J.K. Rowling. Uh, let's see. J.K. Rowling. Is that the one that did Harry Potter? That's not – is that J.K. Rowling? Am I allowed to help here? No, uh, I don't know. That's up to her. Let's see. J.K. <laughs> Rowling. I'm going to say Pride and Prejudice were written by J.K. Rowling. I have no clue. Uh, what's the girl's name does Harry Potter? If that's her, then it's false for sure. Uh, I'm going to go out on the limb and see Pride and Prejudice written by J.K. Rowling. 
I will say that is, gosh, I hope not. I'll say that's false. You are correct, Tom. Woo! Jane Austen wrote Pride and Prejudice. There we go. One for one. We're off and running for Tony Valk, number two. Okay, Elizabeth Bennett is the oldest of the Bennett girls. <laughs> <laughs> so my follow-up question would be, there are Bennett girls in the show, and you would say yes. So Elizabeth Bennett is the oldest girl of the Bennett sisters, is that correct? Yes. I have no clue. I've never even seen this. Uh, Elizabeth Bennett, uh, let me think. She gave me a fall. I'm going to say that's true. That is false, Tom. It's Jane. There you go. Hit the buzzer. We're out. All right. Well, it's been nice talking to you. <laughs> hey, did you know the Heat beat the Nets last night? They did you know? Did, they did. <laughs> okay, and all you're right. going to get this next one right. I can feel it. Does Jonesboro start with a J? That is true. Yes. All right, go ahead. Here we go. Pride and Prejudice was originally entitled Second Chances. Why would you think I was going to get that right? Yeah, I'm on no, the same thing. I have no clue. <laughs> Pride and Prejudice chances. was <laughs> second chances. Pride and Prejudice, I'll say true. Tom, that's false. It's first impressions. <laughs> okay. Why did you think I'd have any kind of a chance? Uh, All right. You have more confidence in me than you should. All right, here we go. Number just because four. Tom was alive before the book was written <laughs> does not mean he's going to know. <laughs> okay, number four. The name of the Bennett family's home was Netherfield. Boy, you talk about a deer in headlight look. Okay, the name of the mansion or the property is called Netherfield. Is that yeah. correct? True or false. True or false, Netherfield. The name of the Bennett home is Netherfield. I've never seen this in my life. I don't have a clue. Uh, I'll say true. False. Okay, all <laughs> right. Burn. Who? I've almost never said. Top Tom. Let's get this right, okay? <laughs> yeah, let's get this over with. You're Mr. exactly right. Darcy offends Elizabeth. At the first ball by dancing with her sister Jane. Could you repeat that for me, please? Sure. This, uh. Mr. Darcy, a gentleman in love interest in this um, show, offends Elizabeth, one of the Bennett girls, at the first dance or the ball by dancing with her sister. Is this true or false? Uh, that's false. He, did, he, she would, he was a man of chivalry. He'd have never done that. That's false. Okay, you got it right. Oh! And not for the right reason. <laughs> you are correct, Tom, but he did refuse to dance with her um, totally, so he didn't even dance with her sister either. Buzzer, a couple of weeks ago we did Black History Month, and I didn't do well on that one. Now, this time it's Pride. What is coming up in Jonesboro so I can start doing some homework? Because this is not, I'm not doing how about, good. How about uh, Jonesboro Day? It's patriotic. All right. Next week, well, you can ask whatever. I don't care. But uh, Pride and Prejudice, it's a great play. But obviously, I need to go watch it. And, and what is the, uh, I, I guess there are Bennett girls. What is the premise of the play or movie, or in this case, play Pride and Prejudice? What is it all the, about? The play is all about second chances, first impressions, not judging a book by its cover. So a lot of the things that grew there in Britain, 1800s, because it is quite of a comedy as well with three uh, young girls, but, um, you know, a lot of those things from the 1800s still stand today. Don't judge a book box cover. Isn't that like the book of Jonah in the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, didn't they just, I mean, didn't somebody just take the book of Jonah and rewrite it into, a, into a soap opera? Yeah. <laughs> Buzzer, you're awesome, young lady. Thank you again. Uh, are there any tickets left for Pride and Prejudice? I know there it's been going. Depends on when you want to go. It does run through March the 29th, and um, you can get your tickets by visiting jonesborotheater.com. There you go. And give me the website to find out more about Jonesboro. Historicjonesboro.com. There you go. Great job. And we appreciate you very much. And oh, uh, have yourself a great day. And remember today. Birdman had a career night against the Nets, and they beat him. What was the final? Wait a minute. I've got that score here. Don't, the Heat beat him 104-98. Yeah. They beat a team 12-51 and 51 by six points. So, there you go. The Birdman <laughs> had a career night. Yeah. All right. Buzzer, love you. Go Kyle Bush. I'll talk to you next week, all right? Take care. All right. Good job. Bye -bye. Thank you, our buddy Buzzer from the town of Jonesboro. Man, you got to know you're desperate when you're excited about a beating a team that's 12 and 51 by six points. But hey, that's a true fan right there. Hey, so. on the upswing though, on a different yeah. on a different note, yeah. Jonesboro is a great town, oh, and is. people who may haven't taken advantage of the storytelling things that go on over there, storytelling festival is, is like one of the greatest events I've ever been to. 
and I abs- I mean absolutely love it. And so uh, that people should go take spend a little time over there and check that out. Uh, I just got my text from Horace. Now here's the good part about this this whole week. He said, "Now he told me I heard it all weekend long. Now when I leave Monday, two twenty is going to be here Monday. When I leave Monday, I'm I'm going to be on vacation. I'm out. Don't holler at me. Don't you know unless you really need me. So Monday morning." Zzz, 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 phone's buzzing. So now we've gotten two here in the last ten minutes. Two for five, hit in the wrong direction. So he's already on me. But he's got his first concession stand stop. Let's go ahead and put that up right there if you can see that. It's a big tub. It's lemonade. Uh, it's not just a glass. It's a tub of fresh squeezed lemonade for my that's boy. good stuff. Yeah, there everybody can see that. There you go. So that's that's his first. And he's captured the back of these people's heads unknowingly. They're now – on being seen around the world on livestream.com, the back of these people's heads. Yeah, they're, uh, that, that, that lemon in there is the size of my fist. <laughs> That's like a 55-gallon drum of lemonade. I'm 6'4", 255, and that thing's like as big as my fist. It's not like a, I'm not a – you know. yeah, that's crazy. That's my boy Horace. His first one, he said – I like it. He said, well, we've got to have jumbo hot dogs. we got pretzels. got ice cream. And I'm thinking, I know him. Every two innings, he's going to go, well – Maybe some pretzels now and some ice cream. And, and I'm going back to Tennessee in the next couple of days. Better, better enjoy it while I'm down here. So first one is fresh squeezed lemonade at the ballpark there. Again, uh, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays and the uh, Toronto Blue Jays in spring training. Well, we tried. Went two for five. Didn't do well today either. That was rough. <laughs> We're in a bad streak. I'm in a bad stretch. I'm, I'm a bad luck charm for you. I, I, you don't need me here. Bad stretch. Man, oh, man. Yesterday, the Elvis stuff went down bad. I went three for five. Today, I went two for five, so I am going in the opposite direction. Yeah, the other day when I was here, you went three. First day, Monday, you went five for five, but Jim was here. Yeah. And then Tuesday, you went three for five. Yep. And then yesterday, you went three. three. And Today now you're two. two. Mercifully, I'm passing the baton because tomorrow, he gets to go. He's sitting in Horace's seat, so tomorrow, oh. we'll direct the questions to him, and we'll be uh, – How much homework do I need to do tonight? Just take it, son, just like Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Had no clue. At least it's true false. Yeah, true Not, false. Yeah. You got a 50-50 shot, and I, I had no clue. I've never seen the show. Uh, the Bennett girls in Netherfield, I'm not sure I'm going to go see the show, but it's it's probably fantastic entertainment. But I was not prepared for the Pride and Prejudice – uh, quiz show, and, it's like three and it showed. There's like three different versions of Pride and Prejudice on Netflix right now. I oh, is have, there really? I may have to watch one of them yeah. now. Only um, one I knew, I knew J.K. Rowling. Isn't that the Harry you Potter are right. version? You were absolutely yeah. right with Harry Potter stuff, yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't even like Harry Potter, but I knew that was her, and <laughs> she's a female, isn't she a female? She is, yeah. yeah. So Jane Austen wrote Fantastic Pride. Fantastic writer. And Prejudice. All right. Tom Taylor Sports Show again. Thank you for being with us on this Thursday again, March the 12th, 24 days into this. Hey, we're going to give you a chance starting Monday to get qualified to win tickets to go to the world's fastest half mile. It starts Monday right here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show will tell you how you can win tickets to be sitting there on Saturday, April the 18th to see the Xfinity Series racing. And also looking like we may get some tickets to throw your way to you go see the world's greatest drivers on that Sunday for the Food City 500. So uh, it all starts on Monday. We'll tell you how that happens. And, again, it'll be here before you know it. We're getting pretty excited and jacked that we're going to partner with the Bristol Motor Speedway folks, and, and they're giving us tickets, and we're going to be running their commercials, and we're excited on both ways. It's win-win. Now, March Madness uh, College Scoreboard Basketball Update. Do we have anything going on that uh, these – we got five games in progress right now, more college hoops, and now there's more kicking yeah, in. there's a lot more. So um, I'm just going to read down them. Um, LaSalle is beating Massachusetts 56-49. Okay. Um, to 49. That. Michigan is still drubbing Illinois, seventy-one to forty-eight. Florida State is squeaking back in a little bit with Virginia, but Virginia's still leading that, forty-one to thirty-four. Now that's in the ACC. Let's go back. Illinois, Michigan, obviously in the Big Ten. LaSalle and uh, who'd you say LaSalle and UMass is in the Atlantic Ten? All right, next. Um, yeah, the um, Marquette Villanova. Big Ten. I mean, I'm sorry, Big East. Uh, sixty-eight forty-one Villanova is winning that. Um, your your favorite team playing Baylor. Yeah, go Bears. <laughs> uh, Baylor's up by two, forty four, forty two. Ah, okay, they're right. they're close. Um, Alabama and Florida. Um, Bama is losing thirty three to twenty seven. So Florida's winning that one, thirty three twenty seven. Um, Idaho and East Washington. Idaho nickname. Uh, uh, no, I don't know. The Vandals. I love it. Idaho Vandals. 
Go ahead. Uh, Idaho's actually the Vandals are winning uh, 39 37. And then FIU, uh, Florida National University, and University of Texas El Paso, UTEP, is winning that 43 to 33 over FIU. That's the Conference USA tournament being played in Birmingham. Alabama. A lot more basketball coming up. Of course, Tennessee and Vanderbilt tonight at 7 o'clock again to the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville for the uh, Big Orange of, of Coach Tyndall and the Vanderbilt Commodores. So we'll see how that one shakes out. We'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later in the show. High school baseball today got some good ones. I hope the grounds are dried. I know that we'll be at J. Fred Johnson Stadium on the artificial turf. Sullivan South plays at Dobbins Minute this afternoon. Tennessee High is going to be at Sullivan East. Uneka plays at Sullivan Central in baseball. Uh, and soccer today. That's 220 Sport. Daniel Boone at Volunteer. Sullivan Central plays, kicks. How would you say it? Plays. Is it a match or a, a game? It's a match. It's a soccer match. Yes. It's not a soccer game. No. I just learned something new. Seriously, it's a soccer match? Yes. All right. Soccer match. You, you would play a match. I didn't know that. All right. Daniel Boone in a soccer match at Volunteer. Sullivan Central is at Elizabethan. Uh, in softball today, all this weather permitting, of course, with all the rain we had over the last couple of days, Hampton Lady Bulldogs play at Sullivan Central. Dobbins minutes in a tournament in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And we got some track going on today. Some track and field. There's a four-way opener at Dobbins minute. And then a track meet at Tennessee High there at uh, the Stone Castle. We're in behind the Stone Castle. Sullivan East, Elizabeth, and Happy Valley and Sullivan Central today at Tennessee High. And a one, two, three, four, five team track meet today at the Stone Castle in Bristol. That's kind of your local sports and again lots of college basketball. We'll take a break, come right back. We were at the press conference yesterday at Bristol Motor Speedway and some exciting news and you know it's more than just a race. We're about to throw some statistics your way. It's quite frankly for me it's staggering the kind of money that generates around this track and the importance it is to our economy twice a year and also the drags in June as well when they come in the NHRA drags come in around Father's Day. Uh, it is a big, big, big economic indicator for our region. And, boy, if you took the money, I've got about to tell you, coming out of the break, out of our economy, we'd be in a world of hurt. As an 18-county region that Jerry Caldwell alluded to yesterday, the general manager of the track, uh, Bristol Motor Speedway and Dragway. And so uh, big bucks coming to town in April and also come back in August. And without it, we'd be in a lot of trouble, i just tell you, financially in our region. So the importance of Bristol Motor Speedway, it's more than just some great racing, the world's fastest half mile. Economically, it is a must for our economy, and, and we'll show you those numbers and probably tell you those numbers coming up here in just to, uh, just a few minutes. Also coming up, we've got David Carmichael from the uh, Johnson City Parks and Rec. Also coming up next, we'll, uh, as we said, talk a little Bristol Motor Speedway and also – Boxing. Boom. Merriweather and Mayweather. And Pacquiao. <laughs> yeah. And Pacquiao. Mayweather and Pacquiao. These boys win or lose, they're going to get the biggest purse ever in boxing. More than Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, Pickham Tyson, George Foreman, any of those guys, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, anybody. Roberto Duran, biggest prize fight ever financially coming up May second. And we'll tell you the kind of money's out there floating so you know, if I go out there and get my brains beat out, I mean, I want to win it. But if I get whooped, paycheck's still going to be there. It's guaranteed. So we'll talk about that coming up as well. Uh, next, we'll come right back and continue on. And we'll talk uh, also about March Madness. Big money going on there, too. So lots of money being talked about today. Quick break. We'll be right back with more. We thank you for being with us on this Thursday on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At Farmers, we make you smarter about your insurance because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know to update your coverage when adult children move home? Oh, heck no. Or that you could get coverage for identity theft through your homeowner's insurance. And that your valuables can be covered by home insurance even when they're not at home. The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. <laughs> Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles, to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store. Bracken paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. Life has its twists and turns can take many different shapes but a good retirement plan changes with your life and as we talk about what you're putting away 
and how much you'll need to retire, what was uncertain becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at FCA.org. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. Looks like a little popcorn there. There you go. Uh, that's our second entree of the day down there in Port Charlotte. Didn't take long. About 10 minutes after the lemonade, going after some popcorn. So that's our boy Horace. Can you, see, you can see that, right? Yeah, they can see it. Yeah. Right. Popcorn. And he gives us a score, too. I don't know why. Not that that even matters. Let's see. He's Toronto leading 3 nothing, batting top of the third in Port Charlotte. So we've got. We've hit uh, the lemonade, the 55-gallon drum lemonade, and now we got the uh, looks like a garbage can full of uh, popcorn from my boy Horace down there enjoying the uh, sun and fun, as they say. Great ball game happening. We'll try and get a final for you down to the final 11 seconds of the ball game, 55-53 Union City. And with 11 seconds to play, Hampton was down huge, and they mounted a big-time comeback. And so with 11 seconds to go, there's a timeout on the floor, and we'll try and get a final for you. Hampton's got the ball after the timeout, and they're down by two, 55-53. So hopefully they can pull off a miracle and win it as they were down big, and the Bulldogs have fought back to make it a two-point game. And so they'll have the ball coming out of this timeout. As we said, we'll try and get that to you before we, uh, before we get out of here, which uh, we should be able to because we've got well over an hour left in the show. Bristol Motor Speedway again. Yesterday they had the new campaign that came out. Uh, it's awesome, and – I'll give props again to the Kingsport Times News here. Uh, it's called, I don't know if you can see that. Can they see that, 220? It's My Bristol Baby. Yes. My Bristol Baby. Of course, Chamber CEO Miles Burdine on the front page of the Times News. That's the new campaign or a campaign for the folks at BMS. Meaning, of course, the economic impact of the track to uh, this region, 18-county region. Here's some numbers. It's, uh, it's pretty, no, it's not pretty. It is impressive. World's fifth, here's the first thing, the, world is, the world's fifth largest sporting venue, Bristol Motor Speedway, brings over $417 million directly to the area, $417 million. The result of the indirect impact is over $1.4B, as in boy, billion dollars to our 18-county region in both southwest Virginia and northeast Tennessee. The Battle of Bristol football game next year expected to bring in another $125 million in direct impact. It's the largest football game ever, so you got to know they're not only around the south, around the country, but around the world. Folks will come in and watch this game and say they were at the biggest football game ever next September between Virginia Tech and the Tennessee Volunteers. $439 million in direct impact for that football game alone. Here's another story, pretty interesting. 146,000 permanent seats, Bristol ranks second in NASCAR, only behind 147,000 seats at Daytona. Well, I don't know if you know this, but Daytona, we talked about this before the 500. Horace and I talked about this. Bristol will be the top of the poll in that one because Daytona is ripping out uh, thousands of seats with its Daytona Rising project, uh, which means they're going to tear out seats at Daytona, build some corporate suites and different things. So uh, after that's all said and done, this will be the number one permanent seat facility in NASCAR, Bristol Motor Speedway. That is really, really impressive. So, uh, again, 
146,000 permanent seats. Bristol ranks second to NASCAR, only behind the 147,000 seats of Daytona. That'll soon change as they continue to tear out the seats of Daytona International Speedway. And so, again, all this happened yesterday at a press conference, and uh, there's yard signs you can get of bumper stickers. And In fact, i got a bumper sticker somewhere. I'll get that and show it during uh, during the next break. We'll get a chance to run down the hall and get it here at the uh, in the studio. Bristol Motor Speedway also announcing some campaign initiatives. An open house. I want you to mark the calendar on the 28th, two weeks from Saturday. Is that right? Yeah. March 28th from noon to 3. Uh, featuring kids' activities, interactive stations, a number of displays, track tours, a free hot dog lunch. All this on March the 28th from noon to 3, open house at Bristol Motor Speedway. Also, ticket holders for the Food City 500 on April the 19th will have an opportunity to sign up to drive their own vehicle for five laps around the world's fastest half mile behind an official pace car. There we go. Jump in your ride, and here we go. I don't get to go out, though, and, like, lay the hammer down and just race five laps around like I'm controlled by a pace car. Let me go ahead and say it again. <laughs> While following an official pace car, yeah. That redneck thing's got to be kind of muffled. Now, I'm going to get horse take Snow White around there, the big white truck. You think he'll do it? You think he'll be afraid he's going to uh, buff up his tires or rough up his tires? You think he'll take that big white truck around there? I think if it's just, like, following a pace car, I bet if there's, like, Four Roberts out there wanting to, <laughs> wanting to get loose Four in the necks. corner. Yeah, I don't know. If it, uh... <laughs> so we'll see if we can get him to take the Snow White ride around. That's coming up again uh, on the 28th. Also, there's a brand new expanded. This is something really neat, too, for traffic control. A lot more park and ride options this year through the, the rally bus with an on-demand travel company. There's going to be four locations in Bristol, Virginia, Johnson City, Bluntville, plus a soon-to-be-named site in Kingsport where you can jump on the bus. Ride will take you straight up to the track, drop you off, take you right back to your vehicle for a price of 20 bucks per round-trip ticket. And so that's going to be happening this year, making it even easier to get for the traffic control, which I think they do a great job already anyway. Free parking will also remain available with free shuttle service at two locations, the Speedway Parking and Camping at the corner of White Top Road. And so all that was announced yesterday. Also, this is the 50th anniversary of Bristol Dragway, known as Thunder Valley. We're going to have Julie, um, Julie Bennett on coming up here probably Monday or tomorrow maybe to talk about what's going on with the drags for 2015, the 50th anniversary of Thunder Valley. It all got started there in 1965 and, and of course, uh, as we said, celebrating the 50th anniversary. But, again, the numbers, man, oh, man, oh, man. This race coming up next month, we're, what, 30-some days away, $417 million directly to the area. The result of the indirect impact is over $1.4 billion. So uh, it's uh, that's big stuff. And, of course, all three cities were represented there yesterday, the big cities, Bristol, Kingsport, and Johnson City. And, again, General Manager Jerry Caldwell saying it's a two-way street. Track is so successful because of the support of the three tri-cities and the larger 18-county home area. And he's exactly right. So we we'll have some folks on either tomorrow or Monday to talk about that. Is this a final? It's final, unfortunately. Union City defeats Hampton 57-53. That is a final for the uh, AA quarterfinals of the boys' basketball tournament. So the Bulldogs down big, fought back to make it a ball game and lost by four. And that's the final 57-53 in favor of Union City. They move on to the Hampton Bulldogs, finish their season with certainly nothing to be ashamed of with a record of 28-8 and for Coach Ned Smith and the Hampton Bulldogs. They do lose. But, again, as we said earlier from yesterday, Clintwood's girls and Y Central's girls did, in fact, win state championships and brought those back to southwest Virginia. So that uh, that was really cool from yesterday. Uh, let's see. We have the thought for the day, and we've got that from Larry Kaiser and Nationwide Insurance. And it goes like this. The most beautiful philosophy in the world won't work if you don't. The most beautiful philosophy in the world won't work if you don't. It's called giving effort. you got to go out there and do something. You can't get a – what my dad used to say, boy, you can't get a hit sitting on the dugout with the bat on your shoulder. You may strike out, but you ain't going to get a hit if you're not out there. The most beautiful philosophy in the world won't work if you don't. And that's the thought for the day. Brought to you by our buddy Larry Kaiser from Nationwide Insurance at 282-1389. And we appreciate him very much. And, again, has that Smart Ride program going on at Nationwide right now where you can get a discount. Uh, I would like to sign horse up with this, having rode with him a couple of times. And he's, he's rode with me. In fact, he rode with me once, and he's not, for whatever reason, he's not climbed back into the ride anymore. So I don't know whether I made him nervous. It wasn't big enough for him. I'm not sure what it was, but he did not come back in with me. 
uh, go online to get feedback about your driving. Would you consider yourself a safe driver? I would. Yeah. Well, then this would be something you could uh, benefit from. You get an instant 5% discount when you sign up. The safer you drive, the higher the discount you can get, up to 30% from Nationwide. Gives you personalized feedback to help you make even safer driver decisions. It's a free six-month program. Start saving today at Nationwide. What it does is this little gizmo uh, goes right up there underneath your steering wheel where the computer diagnostic thing goes, and they stick it up in there, and boom, it sits there and it gauges your miles driven, nighttime driving, fast accelerations, and hard braking. Then you get a weekly summary on an email about your driving performance. And again, if you're a safe driver, Smart Drive was developed especially for you. So 220 says he's a safe driver. This could work for him. Safer your drive, the higher the discount you can get, up to 30%. I like Nationwide slogan, we put members first because we don't have shareholders. My man to call is Larry Kaiser, 282-1389, 282-1389. And, again, you can give him a buzz and ask about the Smart Ride program from Nationwide because Nationwide is, after all, on your side. Quick break. We'll be right back. I'm going to check in with David Carmichael, our buddy from the Johnson City Parks and Rec. See what's going on there. Things you can get involved in in Johnson City. And he joins us coming up next here on this Thursday on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. It's easy to buy insurance and forget about it. But the more you learn about your coverage, the more gaps you might find. Like how you thought you were covered for this. Check it out, Mom. When you're really only covered for this. Or how you figured you're covered for this when you're actually paying for this. You might be surprised at what's hiding in your coverage. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ta -da, bum, 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 bum. See what might be hiding in your coverage at Farmers.com slash gaps. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, Lives are changed, one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. Back on the Tom Taylor Sports Show on this Thursday. Again, the final score, tough break. Union City hangs on to beat Hampton 57-53 in the AA quarterfinals in Murfreesboro. So Bulldogs dug a big hole, fought back to make it a two-point game and lost by four, 57-53. But certainly nothing to be ashamed of. Great year. The only team down representing us in out of Northeast Tennessee in the boys state basketball tournament on any of the three levels was Hampton, and they get knocked out today. 57 to 53. Let's go to the phonies there, buddy, from the John City Parks and Rec. David Carmichael, good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? I am doing great, Tom. It's a beautiful day in, in East Tennessee. You got a beautiful day in the neighborhood, no question. So let's talk about uh, the Johnson City Got Talent coming up next weekend at Carver in Johnson City. What's this all about? This is going to be, this is one of our big events that we have each year down at the Carver Recreation Center. Uh, we have done the court, we have done the, all the preliminaries, and we're now to 25 contestants. And it will be, we've got singers, we've got dancers, we've got bands that play. Uh, we've actually got a magic person this year doing magic. So people just from the community coming together to, to see, just like the America's Got Talent on NBC, we started this three years ago with the John C's Got Talent. 
Now, you and I and the Apes are big Elvis fans. Is there anybody down there singing Elvis this year as, as part of the competition? Not that I'm aware of. No, no Elvis people in the in the crowd, right? Uh, the, we did have it because years ago there was a guy from John City, Greer Craig, that was a huge Elvis impersonator and could sing. I mean, great voice, everything else. But I don't think Greer is performing this year down at Carver. I know Greer Craig. He's an Elvis imitator. Is that right? Elvis imit. Ask him to sing. Ask him to sing you some Elvis. Back after Elvis died, Greer. <laughs> Greer was a huge attraction around the Tri Cities with his with his Elvis singing. He just called me two hours ago. I don't know what he called me about, but I know Greer, and I think he's going to help me do some ball games. But yeah, Greer Craig is an Elvis imitator. Yes, I don't know that. It, you know, I can't. It's my, I'm trying to jog my memory from 35 years ago, but I can't remember if he did the full outfit. But he used he could sing. He could at least sing like Elvis. So he's legit. He's not one of these like me that tries to and it's terrible. This guy really He's not like the honky tonk man in the WWE. No, he is the he is he is the real deal. <laughs> That's awesome. We just got WWE thrown into the show. There That's you great. go. That's my man Carmichael. He's awesome. So John C's got talents. Next weekend at Carver, can we come watch this? Is there a charge or it's a five dollar it's a there will be a five dollar donut at the door. It's uh, the event is the twenty first at six thirty at the Carver Recreation Center. They'll do a preliminary round of twenty five, and then I believe get it down to the last five, and then uh, do the finalists from there. There you go. That's coming up a week, uh, actually two weeks. No, a week from Saturday at Carver in uh, in John C. Tony David Carmichael. Also, we have a. I guess I'm going to talk about a zombie. Wilderness Survival Camp. Tell me about this zombie camp at the John City Parks and Rec. This is something that's really unusual that, that <laughs> trying to do. We're doing this in conjunction with the ETSU Parks and Recreation classes that they have out there. It is, if you've ever wanted to be a zombie like The Walking Dead, which <laughs> is now one of the hottest shows on TV, we will do Wilderness Survival, like fire, starting a fire, you know, building a shelter, camouflage. I mean, this is it's going to be a little bit more than than you won't be going down the I guess it's the Chattahoochee with Burt Reynolds and <laughs> and uh, John Void and uh, Ned and his crew, but mm-hmm. you'll be doing wilderness survival, kind of like kind of like the Survivor TV show, but doing it dressed up like a zombie. Now, where will this be, Carmichael? This and when will this be? At Wing Deer Park. Out at Wing, it's going to start at the Robert Young Cabin here at the park. Okay. And if you're from, at Wing Deer Park, we have. Four, our five softball fields here, and then our main office, our administrative office, we, we've got the Robert Young Cabin over there. And that's where we do a lot of our outdoor events. Uh, with our, And that's where, the ca- that's where the camp is going to start. We'll do some of the things over there, and then they may even go back up in the woods here at Wing Deer. And there's a lot of things you can and have and, and can only imagine to see when you walk in the backwoods of Wing Deer Park. <laughs> Yes, my boys practice soccer up there. I, I, I've seen what there is to see. Sometimes there has <laughs> been there, over the years there have been there have been many things come out of the woods, the backwoods here at Wing Deer Park. There you go, good rim shot. We're talking to Carmichael again, and he's telling us about the John C's Got Talent, the Zombie Wilderness Survival Camp. Now, what is Zombie the, Camp is eight dollars per person, and you'll need to bring a lunch with you. It's an all day. It's from ages seven to twelve. And it'll be uh, nine thirty to four. Trying to get the kids involved in this and doing something fun for them. So, what would a zombie bring for lunch, Carmichael? What I mean, what is peanut butter and jelly? Brains. Is that we, too? They eat brains. <laughs> brains, yeah. Cow, uh, cow, cow's brains, or would have would have that for lunch. All right, there we go. That's the zombie. Now, when is this again? The zombie camp. The zombie camp will be Saturday, March twenty eighth. All right, that's two weeks from Saturday. On the old calendar, so we can uh, we'll give you the number to call on any of these events coming up here in just a few minutes. Also, want to run down real quick the run the links. Talk about this last week. Run the links 5K run walk coming up on the 21st. Tell us about that. This is a it's a 5K <laughs> run that will happen. It's it's unusual because the, the run is going to be at the Pine Oaks Golf Course. You know, most time when you think of a road race, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to go out in the city streets and run the race there. But this one will be over at the golf course. Beautiful course. Uh, lots of you'll be able to run out on the grass. There's a grass course for barefoot runners, or the traditional run will be on paved paths. 
We've also got a 50-yard dash for children to participate in, something for the kids to do if they come with their parents they are going to run. Also, dogs are welcome at this event. That's something else you, you rarely see at a lot of road races. Uh, registrations are still early registrations are still going on right now uh, it's for the 5k event if you get your registration in before March 19th it's $20 after March 19th it's $25 and all the proceeds everything to this goes to the Johnson City Senior Center Foundation there you go all this going on Johnson City Parks and Rec what is a main number or website we can go to to find out about the Got w- Talent Zombie w- and w- the camp dot MyJCParks.com. MyJCParks.com. My man Carmichael, that's good. So what would a zombie take to a sack lunch? Brains. I like that. Brains. Hey, Tom. Cow or pig brains, yes. <laughs> now, you know, I'm a, Tom, I'm a, I'm a huge soccer guy, and yep. Johnson City Park and Rec has more kids that play soccer than any other park and rec department in the entire state. Really? Yeah. It's, yes, it's, and, it's, and it is a great program. They do a really good job. Um, Our fall soccer program, we have over 1,600 children that participate each year. And it's wow. it, like they ran a huge article on it a year or two ago that it's more kids than any other park and rec in the entire state. Wow. But, but unfortunately, we lost the father of our program, Juan Chu, who for many, many years helped start the program many year, back in 1977 with James Ellis. And Juan coached even until two years ago. He's on our wall of fame. One, unfortunately, passed away two weeks ago. Wow. All right. So, but we pick up the torch and keep on going for him and for everybody oh, yes. else, right? There you yes, go. Yes, we are looking at some things to honor but during this spring and summer to honor Juan for his contribution to our youth soccer program. That's awesome. A hey, great report. Uh, let's see. Tennessee Vanderbilt tonight. Can the Big Orange knock off the Commodores? Uh, they, sh- they should. They should. <laughs> it'll be a cl- – uh, what is it? It'll it'll be a slobber knocker, as Jim Ross would call it. <laughs> Old fashioned slobber knocker. Yeah. All right, Carmichael, you're hilarious, my friend. You're hey, great. I, as a Red fan, I'm excited today. There, we're going to see a number night. We're going to see number nineteen take the field today for the Reds. Are you a Reds fan too? I have been a Reds fan since 1970. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. So and here he is taking the field today. I'm so excited and going to play. I mean, we've had a long line of third basemen from Tony Perez to Pete Rose to Chris Sabo, and now today Will Farrell taking the playing third base for the Reds this afternoon in Arizona. The the actor Will Farrell. Yes, Will Farrell is doing something today. He's playing nine different positions for nine different teams and raising money for cancer research. Awesome. He he, he started. Yeah. He was a, his hero was Burt Campanaris, and Burt Campanaris did this in 1965 with the Kansas City A's. Played every position in the field in one game. There you and go. So Will Farrell is doing this, has taken this up, and he's he's actually starting out today with Oakland and going to play shortstop, and then he's going all around right there in that area, that two, uh, Scottsdale area where he can hop from game to game to game and play with every team. So he'll be for the Reds' third baseman at some point today. They play Arizona. And yes, Arizona. He'll, play one in, he'll play one inning today at third base for the Reds. There you go. You are a plethora of information, Carmichael. I'm telling I had you. heard yes, part of that today. That's awesome to hear more of the story. That's great. Yeah. And, and one thing yesterday you said about, the, about Kurt Busch. Yes. And about the exception. NASCAR has done that exception twice. They did it with Tony last year. Yep. After Tony had the unfor- unfortunate accident in New York, they allowed Tony had he qua- had he qualified for the heavy one race, they were going to let him in the chase. And also, they're doing it for Brian Vickers this year. Yes, it is because of his uh, heart surgery. Yep. Now, will they do it for Kyle Busch when he comes back? Do you think? But I, I don't know why anybody would do anything for Kurt Busch. I really don't. <laughs> He's, I mean, I don't know who's more loathsome, Kurt Busch or Kyle Busch. Take your pick. Well, you, you well just... we're done with this interview. Uh, Carmichael, I'm a big Kyle Busch fan, so I really appreciate you checking in with us. and uh, Enjoy those zombie brains, and we'll talk to you next week, all right? Yes, sir. Have a good one, Tom. Thanks. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Take care. He's hilarious. That guy is hilarious. David Carmichael uh, used to be my stat guy back in the Voice of the Bucks. Oh, gosh, 15, 20 years ago, he was my stat man. we got some stories traveling on the road with that guy. He is hilarious. And so 
I did not know Will Ferrell. That's pretty cool. He's rotating nine different teams, raising five, money for five cancer games. research. Yeah, five games going to play for each team at those games, one inning, one, one, inning, yeah. one inning, and then bounce around. Hey, so that was an interesting thing. He's talking about the heart surgery uh, with Vickers that's coming back this year. Mm-hmm. You and I talked yesterday after the show went off the air of bouncing in between these guys and kind of, you know, if, if – uh, if a fel if uh, not felony is the right word, if, if a if a wrongdoing is a wrongdoing, a sin's a sin, however you want to say it, it what where's wh- how do you level the playing field when somebody's done something wrong? But here's a you know, a medical condition mm-hmm. that you're looking at. Kyle's kind of the same thing. You know, the, the Tony Stewart. Tony's was unique. I mean, it wasn't something that, you know, he did something to get removed. He took a, a break because of a really bad situation. So I mean, I know I know that the rules are you know I'm I'm an artist kind of guy, and so rules are kind of there to be broken in my world. But you know, in this situation, you feel like the rules should be there and be established. Say, you know what, it is what it is. Chances are you're probably not going to hit somebody with your car in New York next year. Chances are you're probably not going to have a heart problem next year. You just can't race this year, or do you? Do you kind of come and go? And and what happens when somebody does something? you know, substance abuse or something like that that's that's on the level, and I know people probably wouldn't agree with this, on the level of, of domestic violence that's that's something that's very tangible that, hey, this is wrong, this is a wrongdoing, he should have been suspended. Well, it's something they knowingly did. Yeah, and then they were suspended for it, yeah. not, yeah. not that car they were wreck. just step back and, hey, I need to take a break. Or Vickers, have, he's had problems over the last two or three years, blood clots in his legs, and last year, uh, off season he had uh, – uh, constructive heart surgery. So now he's back. He raced last week in Vegas. He'll be back. He's back in the car now. He got the green light to go. But those situations, they don't have any control over. I mean, blood clots and Kyle Busch had the wreck. Uh, you know, I, I guess somebody would argue, well, Tony Stewart could control what happened up there last year in New York, but it, it happened. So this guy gets domestic violence or commits domestic violence, and he's got he's been given a pass. So. Treated the same way as someone who had a serious medical emergency that's come along. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, I worked with students, middle school, high school students for twenty years. I mean, so I'm used to rules kind of being called into question because that is what middle school and high schoolers do. But I, I just I'm struggling here. You know, there's a bunch of adults. I feel like there should be something a little more concise and clear um, on that. Yeah, probably should be two sets of rules, uh, substance abuse or you know, a medical situation you have no control over. Now, uh, do they let Kyle Busch come back, uh, see that he can point the finger at NASCAR because one, and we'll never know, but what would have happened, or now let me rephrase that, how significant that injury would have been or how severe, I should say, the injury had there been safer barriers there. He may still be racing. It may have just been a bounce off the wall, took a hard hit, maybe took a day or two off and back in the car. That's not the case, obviously. So uh, if they tell him he can't do it, he can't come back, then he's got a legitimate real, I think, and I'm a fan of his, but a real legitimate uh, gripe because NASCAR, for the fact they didn't do what they're supposed to and have those safer barriers in place at Daytona, they have denied him a chance to make a living. I, I agree. I mean, I'd say the same thing. And um, So he should get a waiver. If he gets back in the car uh, because he's out, not anything he did wrong, he, he got – spun and wrecked but the significance of the impact of the injury is a result of what nascar did not do at daytona and the next day they put the barriers up so i think and i'm a kyle bush fan i think if he gets back they ought to give him a waiver too let him come back in that car because uh i can't say it's nascar's fault but you know he wrecked the car but the uh safe safety measures were not there to make sure he didn't get hurt uh worse or as bad as he did. So well, in Tony Stewart's situation, I think NASCAR would have looked um, pretty unprofessional if they would have forced Tony's hand, made him drive. I think Tony needed to take that break, probably just for himself personally. No, no one will ever know the intent of that. Uh, I mean, other than Tony Stewart. I mean, he is the only person who knows like the the full details of that there. But you know, Tony kind of they needed to give Tony one, uh, Tony a, a kind of an exemption there because he. You know, like I said, he needed to take the break. It was better for NASCAR for him to take a break. That's just, that's just like the NFL. If they would have left Adrian Peterson and um, Ray Rice in, in the in there in those situations, if they hadn't have taken them out, you know, Jim Beheim in the Syracuse situation, if those things, if those teams hadn't have taken and and made some steps, like it's worse for NCAA if they just say, well, we're going to let Syracuse police this on their own. Could you imagine if Penn State would have been their own police? In the in the situation that happened uh, with Sandusky and everything, I mean, so I think that was the right move. It just, yeah, I'm, 
I'm, I'm interested to see kind of the, the Kurt Busch thing. It still kind of confuses me a little bit. I'm interested. Uh, all of a sudden, big announcement last Friday. We had it here on the show, Jim Beheim in Syracuse, and he says we're not going to be in the ACC tournament. Or they said they're not going to be, not Jim Beheim did, but the NCAA said, or it was the university, one of the, the two. University said, and the university and the NCAA um, uh, agreed with their – they didn't do anything extra. They said we're, we're okay with that self-inflicted punishment. Haven't heard anything since. Hmm. It's just kind of went away. Now, the Kurt Busch story, case in point, is on, drones on and on and on. Uh, even the Penn State things come back up. All of a sudden, the Syracuse thing is just kind of boom. Here's what I – there's nothing more been said. Bayheim's not said anything. Of course, they're not in the tournament. Uh, it's just interesting to me how it's just kind of quote unquote went away for the time being. I mean, that's a big story. Yeah. It has a lot of impact on college basketball and college sports. And, and, uh, it was announced and it's like, Oh, okay. And nothing more much has been said about it. I find that interesting that it's kind of, uh, tabled itself. Maybe all the college tournaments has taken, taken the, uh, heat off of the situation for the time being, but they announced it and it just kind of, as I said, went away. Not much has been said about it, so it's interesting. Well, Syracuse is one of those programs that I think that when you look at sports, uh, in, I think at least in the last 20 years, you see teams like in college basketball, for, for instance, you see Duke, Carolina, Kentucky. Um, you see a few of those programs, and they're considered more of your classy programs that, that kind of quality coaches. And you know, Jim Beheim's a great coach. But I think Syracuse, I even go back to UNLV with the, like the running Rebels and Tark chewing on the towel back in the day. I think there's teams like that, Georgetown, that are seen as a little more uh, of not not quite that classy of a team that seem, have, a, have a rough edge. They tend to turn out players that come off a little bit, you know, um, you know Patrick Ewing and Allen Iverson and, and, and players like that. Um, oh, I was trying to think of uh, the guy who played Larry Johnson and stuff from UNLV back in the day. I mean, those guys come out, and, and I think Bayham kind of falls into that category, and sometimes those types of teams – it does. It's just like, well, they're, I hate to use the word thug, but I think it kind of comes across as they're treated as a thug team at times, and so it just drops off. If this was Duke and Coach K, you, I would be ready to throw my TV out the window because, it, one, I mean, I just I think we'd all be just astonished that that was Coach K. <clears throat> but I think, two, people would just play it to death because it's considered a classy franchise. If it had been Dean Smith – um, if it, if it had been uh, Patino, some of these guys, I just think that I mean you wouldn't be able to, they would not be able to get it shut off because it just it would be such a like I can't believe this happened because this is a classy program, not a program that's maybe had a tendency to be seen as turns out players that aren't quite as elite or whatever. That's not true. That's not the best word. I said that wrong. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> I got you. I, 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 I not understand. Elite. They are an elite program. I shouldn't have said elite. I, that was a bad word. But I got you. I understand what you're talking about. Yeah. It's perception. Mm -hmm. Perception's everything. And if it was Duke or Kentucky or was North Carolina, everybody's kind of in shock because of the academic fraud going on over yeah. at, over at University of North Carolina. It's kind of up on a, a pedestal among uh, probably more so than other schools. I don't think Syracuse is up on that pedestal uh, as much. In fact, I know they aren't. I mean, no. Carolina. I would say you could probably take Carolina, Duke, uh, Kentucky. Uh, there was a point in time when Indiana was up on that pedestal when Bobby Knight was coaching. And I would say they're still probably considered a classy program. I, I think they're in that, that that realm, yeah. Yeah, perception and just uh, elite, maybe not, but perception is just kind of a cut above everybody else, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure Syracuse is there. But still, the fact is it kind of went away because, you know, in the in the sports world, they get a hold of a story and they just pound that drum over, they being the journalists and media, over and over and over. And so right now it's kind of been put on the back back burner. And we'll see if it rears its head after the uh, March Madison, after the tournament, because Syracuse is not there. Uh, we will get an update from 220 on the college basketball scoreboard while he's doing that. Let me tell you about the good folks at Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics. 39 years, four locations, one family. How about that? Talking about tradition. 39 years, four locations, one family. Again, located on Broad Street in Kingsport, in Bristol, on Highway 126 near Steel Creek Park, in Greenville on Justice Drive, and also in Pounding Mill, Virginia on Short Street. Uh, clinics, they offer those in Abington, Withville, Lebanon, Norton, Sevierville, Mountain City, Newland, North Carolina, and Linville, North Carolina. Again, the phone number is 1-800-524-4447. 1-800-524-4447. Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, the orthotics part. Uh, they have the uh, custom-made and pre-made devices, carbon fiber, which means lightweight. They also have the plastic, metal, and leather based on your needs. 
uh, for someone I know last uh, last year we talked to Will Gray Bill. We're going to have him on soon. Last year he was helping some folks who were in a car wreck with a spinal brace. And so he developed and made and, and actually constructed a spinal brace for this particular need for this gentleman in the hospital. I believe he was up in Bristol at the time. Spinal bracing, both pre-made and custom designed, as Will did. Uh, wrist, ankle splints, knee sleeves, uh, rehab bracing. If you blow out a knee or blow out an elbow or whatever, getting back after an injury or surgery, they'll help you with that. Each orthotic device is designed for your comfort, your mobility, and your safety in mind. So uh, they do it right here in the Tri-Cities, and they've been doing it for 39 years, Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics. So if you need those type of things, please give them a call, and you do, at 1-800-524-4447, or go to the website bristolomp.com for Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics. Basketball scoreboard update. Anybody been knocked out? Anything been finalized today? We've got a few finals in the Atlantic 10. Uh, LaSalle uh, beat uh, UMass 76 to 69. I don't know how you're going to go to sleep tonight, Tom. Um, oh, man. In Big 10, uh, Michigan continued their route and beat Illinois 73 to 55. In the ACC, Virginia beat Florida State 58 to 44. Um, in the Big East, Marquette got drubbed by Villanova, eighty-four to forty-nine, and have a few games here still um, still active. Um, how's, what, your, how's your tide doing? Uh, down six in the second, and so they're down four. It's forty-nine. Actually, they're not down nine now. Forty-nine to forty. Um, West Virginia is down one, uh, 66 67 versus Baylor, Baylor with four fifty-five left. Go Bears. <laughs> Florida International and UTEP. Uh, UTEP is winning 64-47 in the Conference USA. Uh, the Big Sky champ- Men's Championship quarterfinal is uh, East Washington leading Idaho. And just starting, we have um, Big Ten, another Big Ten game. Penn State is leading Iowa 6-2. to two. There you go. Good one coming up with the ACC in a little while, too. Louisville, North Carolina getting ready to get after it. That'll be Roy Williams against yeah. Rick Patino. That's going to be a good one. In the uh, Atlantic Coast Conference at 2.30 tip, who's coming up here in just a minute or two. Tonight, it's Tennessee and Vanderbilt at 7 o'clock. Carmichael said they should beat Vanderbilt. If they, now, if they do, it remains to be seen, but Carmichael said they should beat Vandy tonight, they being Coach Tyndall and the Tennessee Volunteers. We'll take a break, come right back. We'll see what's going on in the woods and the waterways of Tennessee with our buddy. David Crum, he joins us coming up next here on this Thursday edition of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At Farmers, we make you smarter about insurance. Because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know that it's smart to replace washing machine hoses every five years? What if you didn't know that you might need extra coverage for more expensive items? And what if you didn't know that teen drivers are four times more likely to get into an accident? What's up? The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles, to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com.
bomb. Yeah. 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 That good? I feel like you should be doing the Macarena when we have that. I mean, I do the Macarena. How's that? Like this? <laughs> That's more like Gongman. No That's more know. like Gongman style there. I'm not sure. All right. <laughs> oh, Doug Dynasty? No, Gongman style. I thought you Godman. Godman. No, no, no. Yeah, I got Doug Dynasty in my brain. All right, so here we go. <laughs> now we've had a lemonade. We've had popcorn, and now we're into the fourth inning. And can you can they see that? Yeah, uh, well, kind of. It tilted a little bit forward. How's that? Yeah, let me try. Take it. Get up here close to the camera. My yeah. boys. Uh, he's now. He's went through the lemonade. 55 gallon drum of lemonade. He's hit hot on the popcorn. Now he's rolled into nacho, nacho man. There you go. And he says <laughs> pathetic nachos. Yeah. So. Well, when you've eaten nachos out of a baseball hat, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I think you, a normal nacho would seem a little lame to you. You got some proving to do. Yeah. <laughs> if you've had it out of a out of a baseball batter's cap, uh, batter's helmet, uh, yeah, you better you better charm him down there in Florida. Apparently, it's not. Uh, we get the Right along Texas, pathetic nachos. So my boys had lemonade. We're just in the fourth inning. We had lemonade, nachos, and popcorn. So and remember the big what do you call it? The big the big hot dogs coming. Oh yeah, in like the sixth inning or yeah. something like that. Well, know what do you call it? The big hot dog something, or the yeah. major league hot dog or something. So that he's not even got into the. These are just warm ups. I promise. See you. now that would be a bucket list thing for Melissa and I. We would love to have a, have an RV and one summer. Just take over like like a three month period and hit every major league ballpark. Yeah, and that and that like take a little summer. I mean, that's maybe a, like a bucket list. We get a little bit older. We'd love to go around and catch all the baseball games and stuff. First place you'd go to would be. I don't know. I guess I have to plot the trip. I mean, I definitely would want the last place I was at to be Atlanta. I might start in Atlanta and end in Atlanta. Uh, I just, <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, we're Braves fans, and so. Um, pray for you go yeah. ahead <laughs> no, no no we probably start there so i mean it would just you know you'd want to plot the trip and go well uh, we'd love to take route 66 not a lot of baseball teams along route 66 but uh some things you know just love to kind of do that but yeah what jim's doing there kind of being out different ballparks checking that that's a cool deal he showed me a picture uh, a few minutes ago it's got a full house the crowd i mean they're 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 hanging off the rafters there so to speak man people get jiffy stupid over baseball i mean coming back in spring training and i'm like your guy pitches like one inning. Yeah. Like, why do I care if the, exactly. the single A guy that's getting ready to go back to single A gets to play? Woo! If I'm his dad, if it's one of my three boys, I'm exactly. like, good job, buddy. There you, you go. Great. Everybody else like, really? That my star gets to play, play one or two innings, particularly if you're a pitcher. So, yeah. anyway, he's down there having a good time, and he's on to his third entree. Lemonade, popcorn, now nachos. And we got a few minutes left here. We'll see if he hits anything else before we, we get out of here today. We were uh, talking earlier. Uh, we're waiting on the call from Mr. Crum. He may may be uh, detained, taking care of things in the woods and waterways, the TWRA. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, I said it right? You did. And Floyd Mayweather Jr., fixing to get in the ring on May the 2nd. Uh, each will get 60% of the purse in what is expected to be boxing's richest fight ever. All right? A haul that could exceed $120 million for Mayweather alone. Pacquiao won't do badly either in a fight that was five years in the making. We'll break records, and in another way, it'll cost you and I more than any other fight in history to watch it, both at the MGM Grand Arena or in the comfort of their living rooms or homes. Uh, at the only press conference the fighters will do prior to the week of the fight, promoters announced the tickets would range from $1,500 in the upper reaches of the MGM to $7,500 a ticket at ringside. Not a chance. Not a chance I'd sit and watch that. If you said, I'm going to put you in the ringside seat, I wouldn't go. I just That's just crazy. But that's just me. Now, you would say, I'm there. Popcorn, I'm in, I guess. Would you, know, you go? You know, Yeah, I would go. Do you know who <clears throat> can afford to go now? DeMarco Murray, because he's getting $42 million from the Eagles. He went to the Eagles? Yes. Ah. You and I both just having a horrible day. He could have been with these guys. <laughs> he See, I'm telling been. you, these guys are getting ready to make some moves. <laughs> he could have been with the one-eyed band. You know what? If y'all take that eye patch off, y'all can see where to throw the ball and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so Murray's now an eagle. He's an eagle. He can afford to go. But anyway, I think Pacquiao wins this fight. I think uh, Mayweather's undefeated. He's he's a great. He's been a great champion, and he's done some great stuff. I just think Pacquiao's got one in him. I think he can um, can take the punches. Mayweather's tend to just like lay people out. I think Pacquiao's been in some some pretty tough fights and going to going to win it. Fifteen hundred upper reaches of the MG, MGM Garden to seventy five hundred dollars a ringside. Now the pay for you price exceed, expected to be in the ninety to one hundred dollar range. 
to watch the fight. And See, like I love watching boxing, I love watching UFC, but I, I'm not paying those fees. And I, I should go and I'd go to Buffalo Wild Wings something like that occasionally and sit down with some friends and and watch it. But I'm just you know I can buy nachos for for twelve dollars. I'm not I don't have to pay ninety for the fight. But um, that's that's just a lot of money to. Uh, I mean, the other night, Ronda Rousey, 14 seconds. Everybody, like, paid all this money to get this thing, and the, the headlining fight was was it was a female UFC match, and it was Ronda Rousey, She and she, 14 seconds. It's over. Over. Yeah. Remember the fight with Tyson and, um, was it Buster Douglas? It mm-hmm. was, like, one punch, like, four seconds or something Boom. like that. He's out. I'm thinking. Dude. <laughs> do you know how much money, like, I, that, I mean, if people paid to see four seconds of a fight? Well, it's talking about Mayweather says, hey, uh, for 100, what he said, 36 minutes worth of work, what, 12 rounds or three minutes around? Talking about making nine figures in 36 minutes. Uh, that's from Mayweather and Pacquiao. That'll be coming up May the 2nd. And so if you want to watch it here in the uh, area, 90 to $100 range, they're saying it's going to be pay-per-view. So uh, is what it is. Milligan College tonight getting ready to play hoops. We had Woo-hoo. Coach Robinson on earlier in the week. Taking on, there you go. Taking on Dakota Wesland at 5 o'clock our time at Point Lookout, Missouri, which is right, as he said, next door to Branson. Last time the Buffs were in the national tournament, 2001, 14-year hiatus. And so good luck. Uh, they'll have their hands full. Uh, Dakota Wesland, fifth in the country at 28-4. and four. Told us the other day that they shoot, what did he say? They shot, they shoot 33s a game. I think I heard him tell me that on the interview. And Dakota Wesland shoots more than they do. And they're Substantially. Averaging, yeah. I mean, they're jacking them up. So I guess that's what they live and die by, the three. They cross half court, and it's going up. Uh, you, if you can crank out 33s in a ball game, of course, you're playing 20-minute halves. That's 15 minutes, uh, 15 and a half, if you look at it that way. If you can do more than 15 and a half on three-pointers, you are crossing the line. You're letting them fly, baby. They're jacking them up. So. Well, I mean, you get the ball, ba- for all intents <clears> purposes, <throat> you get it once a minute with shot clock. So you get the ball uh, 20 times and a half. I mean, you get it more than that, but I mean, it, because there's fast breaks and games stuff like mm-hmm. that. But you know, if you looked at just a shot clock game kind of thing, I mean, these guys are coming down and literally thirty, you know, sixty percent of their shots are going up as threes. It's a lot of shots. That's what they're going up against. Twenty-eight and four, they are again. Uh, Milligan, nothing to sneeze at. They're twenty and ten, so they will play each other today at five o'clock. And so, good luck to the Milligan Buffs, and as they take on Dakota Wesleyan, and hopefully they can get that W and move into the second round. So. Uh, Dakota Wesleyan received the number one at-large bid for the tournament. So they're there having won 15 of the last 17. So tall task for the uh, Buffs. But, again, Coach Robinson's doing a great job at Milligan, and good luck to uh, to he and the Buffs today uh, later on this afternoon at Point Lookout, Missouri. Now, East Tennessee State Sports switched last year Go Bucks. to Freedom Hall. <laughs> Switched from the Atlantic Sun, which they should have never been in, to the Southern, where they should have always been. That's just me. Haven't done the Bucks before on the radio, I can say that. Uh, they are back and big time. Revenue up big time this year. 25% increase from the year before. Average game attendance at home games, 4% increase at about 107 fans. More fans, fannies in the seats overall. 11% more students in the stands, despite playing the games off campus. Freedom Hall is a perfect venue for basketball. Perfect. Not a bad seat in the house. And I've always thought that. And uh, it's obviously proven to be true. Average revenue per game from walk-up ticket sales for the Bucks to those who didn't hold season tickets nearly doubled. Why is that? Easy to get to. Big parking lot. Easily accessible. Uh, parking on the campus at ETSU can be, uh, you know, it can be troublesome at times. Well, they've so. got the new parking garage, but when students are there, it doesn't help you a whole lot. That place <clears> gets filled up. Exactly. So they added nearly $3,300 per game to sales figures based on folks walking up and buying tickets uh, at Freedom Hall. So obviously the move to go there with the city, they worked out a deal with the city, this all out of the uh, Johnson City Press, going to give them uh, props for this article. Uh, so plus the – and I've always said this too, Atlantic Sun. Tell me one rival the Bucks had in Atlantic Sun. I don't. Maybe David Lipscomb, yeah. uh, maybe uh, or Belmont in Nashville. Uh, now you've got them Furman. I mean, the back to the old rivalries back when I was doing the games. I mean, it was a big deal. Uh, that? Chattanooga. That's the big rival. I mean, Who's that's like State play for. Who? What, what conference are they in? Uh, Who does 
Appalachian State play for. Oh, they gosh. They for Appalachian State. Uh, let me think here. They they switched out. They, they switched went to, to uh, not Conference USA. Uh, I'll get to that at Sunbelt. It was okay. a Sunbelt Conference. And so they're not part of it anymore. I think, but, I mean, you've got Furman. You've got Chattanooga, which is the big – I mean, that's that was bad man, that was bad karma back in the day when I was calling the games. Moccasins uh, with uh, Mac. So a totally blank. Mac uh, Mac McCarthy, the coach, uh, and Murray Arnold, the coach down at UT Chattanooga back in the day. Man, it was it bad when they came to town. The place was rocking at the at the dome. So that's a natural rival's back. Furman's back. Wofford's become a good rival. Uh, I think who's I'm leaving off some of the obvious, but uh, the Citadel, pretty good rivalry. Mm-hmm. And so uh, anyway, Southern Conference, they're back. The Bucks are, and the numbers are showing that fans wanted this again. I guess what jumps out of me, walk-up ticket sales. Now, in February, we had really crummy weather. We had snow, two, three of those games. Walk-up ticket sales to those who didn't hold season tickets, as you and I, let's go catch a game, doubled from last season, adding $3,300 per game to sales figures. That's a ton of – that's a lot of money. So, let me ask you this. Yep. The the ETS, you know, Buck football is back. Can't wait. And it's, it's going to be great for the area. People mm-hmm. have really wanted this and, and – I, I really hope that all of those who have, like, stood on street corners and, and preached this show up. But talking about, like, you know, playing at Freedom Hall versus playing at the Dome. Now, the Dome is a miserable place to watch anything. I mean, l- horrible. But they're talking about building a big, expensive football stadium over there. Level on- the Dome and put it right there. It's not enough space, though, is oh. it? I, I mean, because I thought that's what you can raise up. Well, no, well, I mean that's that's kind of the obvious thing to do. But I mean, they're actually they're talking about putting it up there behind the soccer field, like to, like either taking out the tennis courts and moving the tennis courts, which we just spent all that money on the tennis courts, and now we're gonna move them, or putting it down um, where the practice um, soccer or football fields are right now. But what if I mean, like, what if they went to Science Hill? Like, I mean, are you not looking at the exact same problem with football? that you're looking at with basketball, there's no parking. Fans are going to be frustrated. There's no space to go tailgate. There's no – I mean, because that's football. I mean, at its best is people showing up in the parking lot, throwing up pop-up tents, grabbing the grill, sitting around, having their favorite beverage and eating some hot dogs and bratwursts and hamburgers and, and just having a good time. I, I mean, I, I'm just wondering if they're not making a mistake by and, and doing the same thing and building a big stadium over there and then all of a sudden saying, hey – Science Hill's got a pretty good setup over here. Why don't we just a, use that? they got a great facility. It's which fantastic. They're, which they're going to do for the first two years till they build their stadium. But, see, my question would be, and, and here's the statistic that would bear this out, 11% more students in the stands for basketball at Freedom Hall despite the new arena's off-campus location. Students so, don't pay to get in. So, <laughs> my, my point is, if they'll travel to Freedom Hall, they'll walk, I mean, the football, you know, football stadium, tip and stadium is right beside Freedom Hall. So, the money you're going to take to build a brand-new stadium in East Tennessee State, take that same money, partner with the city, and you've got to have more seats up there. To there's got to, And I, I'll have to find this out. There's a minimum number of seats you have to have to be a Southern Conference school for football. I think they're making a waiver this year, the first two years, because Kermit Titman Stadium does not have it, and I can't remember what it is, but it's got to be an X number of seats that you have to have to qualify as a Southern Conference football stadium uh, to accommodate the seating or accommodate the fans' seating. So take that money that you're going to go build a new stadium, and I don't know what that price tag is, but it's a chunk of money. Take that same money, and this is just a thought, and invest some of that money or all that money to uh, add on to Kermit Tipton Stadium. It becomes a showplace for Science Hill. It already is. A showplace even more so for ETSU. And save that money, put it there. And, of course, they're also in the process of raising money uh, through uh, donations for the uh, Fine Arts Center that they're trying to build on the, on the campus of East Tennessee State. So you've got two different factions out there trying to raise money, and sometimes out of the same pot. you got, you know, there's just so many folks to go around, and so sometimes you're asking the same person to double dip uh, to give to the Fine Arts Center, which is certainly worthy of being built, and also to a new football stadium, which is certainly worthy of being built. Now, my question would be, and I'm doing this old West Virginia cipher, and why don't we take what we got over here? It's already a primo facility and make it even more primo. Uh, add, take that money, you're going to build a new stadium and add it to Science Hill, build more seats, do whatever you got to do to bring it up to the standards of the Southern Conference and make it, you know, make it their their uh, permanent home place. 
and put that money on campus to something else. And that's just me. But uh, they are going to work out a deal where Science Hill is going to let them play. And see, there's some question, and I'm thinking, you know, Science Hill plays on Friday nights. You know, this, these football games are on Saturday. Uh, other than the fact that the junior topper programs play there on Saturday in the fall, uh, I don't think it's being used much. Maybe a soccer game every now and then on a Saturday, but it's setting empty for all intents and purposes. Not always, but a lot of the Saturdays it is being used by the junior topper program because I went up there and watched them play. They can move that or play them either before or after the, the Southern Conference game. But then you're talking a 10-game season. You know, if it's a 5-5 five, five split, you're only talking about five Saturdays in the fall that's going to be a home game anyway. Yeah. The other five you're traveling. So, anyway, uh, point to all the story is the move to go to the Southern Conference and move it to Freedom Hall to play basketball was a win-win. And, and uh, ETSU Athletic Director Richard Sanders said he isn't sure whether it was a change in the conference or the venue, but he'll take it. He said, <laughs> a 25% increase, I'll take it. So, and again, uh, the university paid to lease Freedom Hall for the 14 games this season, worth about $52,000 to the city. I'm thinking, without seeing all the numbers, I'm thinking that the Bucks probably covered that and then some. Uh, it looks like to me they made money. Well, they did, 25% increase from the year before. So, uh, smart move, good move, and let's hope it stays that way, and I think it is. I think for all intents and purposes, they're going to be playing their home games at Freedom Hall. Went there and watched the Lady Bucks play. It's a great venue. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, there's not a bad seat in the house, even up in the quote-unquote nosebleeds for a, you know, this is not Rupp Arena or a, a Thompson Bowling. Even the nosebleeds of Freedom Hall, quote-unquote, you're still pretty much down on the action uh, compared to other bigger arenas. So it's, uh, I think it's a good thing, and, and obviously it's working for East Tennessee State University. Uh, let's go back and bring up the story. Uh, we've got a few minutes here left on the show, the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Max Medicine Mart make tracks to Max. Don't forget the Now product line is 20% off. Everything at Max is 20% off uh, under the Now product line through the end of March, and you've got several weeks to take advantage of that. Also, as he talked about yesterday, shingles. Uh, unfortunately, most people have had shingles. It is a very, very painful thing to go through. The shingles vaccination is available at Max Medicine Mart on Center Street in Kingsport. Also, uh, are you a connoisseur? Are you a candy guy? I don't know if you like candy. Easter egg, Easter candy. Have you seen me? Enough said. Gotcha. <laughs> you and I and Horace. Enough said. Uh, Russell Stover Easter bunnies. They got the marshmallow and milk chocolate. They got the mini oh. eggs. As I told you the other day, uh, Horace went, he went, ooh, when I mentioned coconut, cookie dough, caramel, or fudge brownie mini eggs, which I did as well. Big old glass of milk. Ooh, that'd be good. Some cookie dough mini eggs. Got those in stock. Again, at Max Medicine Mart. Also, if you're someone who has to have gluten-free products, they have those at Max Medicine Mart as well. They have a store within a store. It's the uh, Good Food uh, a Good Food Health Store, and they've got that, and it's there. And they have the gluten-free Blue Diamond Almond Nut Thins, the shortbread almond cookies that are gluten-free, and also the coconut macaroons that are gluten-free. And some folks have to have that for the diet, and they have those in stock. And also they have, as we said, the Now product line, something a lot of folks are taking to lose weight for this time of year. The apple cider vinegar tablets, they've got those 20% off. And also uh, cranberry. Cranberry supports a healthy urinary tract. I know a lot of folks have UTI problems, urinary tract infections. So this cranberry product called Cranberry Caps, again, those are in stock and are 50%, I'm sorry, 20% off through the uh, end of March, again, at Max Medicine Mart on Center Street in Kingsport. Make tracks to Max, and you do. We appreciate that very, very much. What's now, your favorite Easter candy? Anything chocolate? Uh, you got another specific? Uh, I like them Reese's peanut butter eggs. <laughs> Serious. Put them in the freezer, <laughs> get them a little cold, bring them out, crunch them, chase them with some milk. <laughs> Booyah. Love it. Serious. Not one. We're talking multiple Reese's eggs. I can eat the whole pack. In fact, I told them on myself the other day, Monday we had those tag-alongs yeah. of Girl Scout cookies, and I said, you boys, nah, no thank you. I sit and ate the whole bag on the show, the whole box. Jim ate one. He had one. I had the other 24. <laughs> so so I'm all about peanut butter and chocolate. So you, what's your favorite Easter candy? I love Cadbury eggs, and uh, I love the chocolate bunnies with the marshmallow in the middle. Yeah. Uh, this, we just called Crum. He said, hello, are you there? So, yeah, we called him, and. Didn't, uh, didn't get a response, so uh, I'm not sure we got time to get him on today, so we'll try and get him on tomorrow. But we did make the call. We did. Yeah, and for some reason got the uh, got the old answer machine. So $42 million going for my man or your man, Murray, 
to the Philadelphia Eagles. Man, that is not good for Cowboy fans. Yeah, no, we've lost six players now. Wow. Why is that? I mean, just free agency. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. But he, he's by far the headliner of uh, of what it is. Yeah. I mean, he's one of the top five players to get to go in free agency, I believe, I feel like, this, this season. March Madness, let's squeeze this in before we get out of here. March Madness, 70 million brackets <laughs> are going to be filled out. Yeah, there are. Yeah. And I'll fill out at least three or four. Yeah, 70 million brackets. The American Gaming Association estimates that 40 million Americans will fill out more than 70 million brackets, wagering up to over nine, B as in boy, billion dollars for the NCAA tournament. Are you going to do a Tom Taylor competition? Yeah, we can do that. Throw out a throw out a bracket to all your listeners and things like that, and everybody can fill one out and send them in. They, well, you can do it online. Yeah, they all kind of join your group. You create a group, and they jump in there, and and you can do that. The Drew Meister is working on that for me. So, oh, he is. Oh, yeah, sweet. We're trying. We're going to try and pull that off. And now, when's it start? Next week? Uh, yeah, Wednesday. Um, they got to have brackets in by Wednesday. They'll play that sixty-four, sixty-five game. That's the that's the dumbest thing ever in the world. I, yes. I, I hate when they did that. Oh, you can lose. It's okay. You can lose a game. That's how life goes sometimes. We do not have to create another space for you to feel like less of a loser. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the Raiders signed former Eagle safety Nate Allen, so we are opening, our, opening hey. up our checkbook. I don't know what that does for us. We wanted Murray, but we didn't get him. <laughs> now, here we go. Before we run out of time, I want to squeeze this in. A federal jury has ordered the NFL to pay nearly $76,000 to fans affected by the 2011 Super Bowl seating mess in Texas. Uh, this went back to 2011. Uh, about 1,250 temporary seats were deemed unsafe hours before kickoff. That forced about 850 ticket holders to move to new seats, 400 others to standing room only areas. NFL has said it's fully compensated displaced fans. There's seven that sued, and those seven, you take $76,000 divided by seven, uh, you're talking roughly 100, uh, about $10,800 a fan. They're going to get it for their troubles on tickets that they bought for the uh, for the Super Bowl back in 2011. So NFL poning up seventy six thousand dollars to seven fans comes out about ten eight a fan. And then, of course, they got to pay the Obama taxes after that, but they're going to get roughly ten eight for their troubles for the 2011 Super Bowl. Taking four years to resolve that in the courts after it happened in. Uh, as we said, 2011. Before we get out of here, we promised we would squeeze in. That's exactly what we're going to do. We'll hear the very latest right now from uh, Kurt Busch, NASCAR driver, got reinstated. Want to squeeze that in before we run out of time. And and uh, here we go. Let's get the latest on what was said yesterday by Kurt Busch, reinstated by NASCAR. I would now like to turn the conference over to our host, Stuart Haas Racing, Mike Arning. Thank you. Good afternoon, and I'm Mike Garning, Director of Communication for Stuart Haas Racing. And with me is Kurt Busch, driver of the number 41 Haas Automation Chevrolet SS for Stuart Haas Racing. Kurt was recently reinstated by NASCAR, and we appreciate everyone joining us today on this teleconference so that Kurt can answer a handful of questions before this weekend's NASCAR Spring Cup Series event at Phoenix International Raceway. Kurt, first off, welcome back. And obviously, this has been a trying couple of months, especially the last couple of weeks. What does it mean to get back in a race car this weekend at Phoenix? Well, thanks, Mike. Uh, it means the world to me to be back in the car. You know, it's been a tough situation the last few months, and I've gone through this with confidence, knowing that I know the truth and that I never did any of the things that I was accused of. It was a complete fabrication, but it's unfortunate that my personal life crossed over and affected my business life. But I can't wait to get to the track, to see my team, to shake their hands, and to say thanks for the support, and to go out there and make my first lap this weekend. There you go. Kurt Busch ready to go. He was the first spring winner in Phoenix, by the way, back in 2005. First time they had a spring race in Phoenix. Kurt Busch brought on the checker, so uh, he has won there once. And, of course, the hottest guy right now, Kevin Harvick, won three straight, four over the last five. He has won by uh, has been won by Kevin Harvick back last year. He led 224 of the 312 laps of the race, and so Harvick dominated last year. Uh, they'll be out on the track tomorrow, three o'clock for the first time. The Cup practice in Phoenix tomorrow. Xfinity Series practice also tomorrow. Cup Coors Light pole qualifying at 7:50 tomorrow night our time. Find out who's going to bring down the uh, pole. Uh, last year, uh, the pole winner or the pole setter, I should say, or captured the pole did not win the race. But last year on the pole, make sure I get this right. Uh, I don't have it right. Where is it? 
Let's see. On the pole last year, yeah, it was Brad Kozlowski. So finished third in the race. So they will do that tomorrow, and that will be happening at Phoenix International Raceway. So that will pretty much do it from here. We have wrapped up a fast two hours. We've covered boxing, high school basketball, Hampton lost today, 57-53 in the AA quarterfinals in Murfreesboro, boxing, NFL football, East Tennessee State Buccaneer Sports. We talked about the Milligan Buffaloes. We had the buzzer on where I did terrible in the Pride and Prejudice. Uh, what a dumb category. Uh, pride and Prejudice. See, when I don't do good, it's stupid and dumb. Have you noticed that? I don't know good. It's stupid. When I don't do good, it's stupid and dumb. Carmichael called in, told us about the zombie survival camp that John C. Parks and Rec, where the kids will take cyclones eating zombie brains. And I don't know, this guy's he's awesome. I love him. And also, we talked a little baseball. We uh, had a food report from Horace. Uh, multiple food reports from Horace, and we've, we've covered a lot of territory today. Talk about a little betting on the uh, March Madness and also uh, some NFL news. So we've uh, covered everything local and national best we could. We thank you. Also the college basketball, and we'll have more of that for you coming up uh, tomorrow here again on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. One more time, podcasting later on this evening. You can see us on YouTube, also on TuneIn's, on iTunes, Stitcher.com, the Stitcher phone app, and again, uh, every day, one to three live on Livestream.com. So for Hit the Music, my friend, for my buddy 220, Pinch Hitting for Horse, this is Tom Taylor again, brought to you by Bracken, Wells Fargo Financial Network, Vito's Restaurant in Kingsport, Bays Mountain Park, Max Medicine Mart, Cherokee Barbershop, Larry Kaiser Nationwide Insurance, Book Lovers Warehouse, Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance, and American Import and Auto Repair. For 220, this is Tom Taylor. We'll tell you, as always, win or lose, be a good sport. See you tomorrow, 1 o'clock, right here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Song, everybody. <laughs>